Yo. What's up? I guess I gotta work. I don't feel like working. And they stopped streaming for a couple days. Then I like, I gotta get back into it. Tim Sutton had a lot. Streaming just chatting. Model 3 ceramic window kit. Why is it so loud? Uh, give it time. Oh, this software's like broken. Why is it so broken? What's up? Hang on, I'm fixing my voice stuff. It's being dumb. Yeah, of course I want to open the one that people are talking in. Why wouldn't I? I'm yelling at software. And my phone in my head and this popped up. Been waiting for this one. Good morning. Thank you for all you do. Why is it broken? What did I do? I didn't do anything. Good morning, Matt. Well, you guys are on that computer for now until I sort this shit out. Yeah, that's the new, my new Model 3. Had my phone in my hand, this popped up and waiting for this one. You're gonna be a little disappointed because I'm not doing the back window today. <laughs> Smack that one back down. <laughs> I actually don't have the right role for the back window. Dude, I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with this right now. Why, why is my whole chat software just? What up, Tesla man? Hello now. Good morning. <laughs> why is it coming out of there, and what can we do to fix it? I haven't had to screw with audio in so long. That's what's really got me right now. Hang on, let me figure this out. Was curious what color you got. Is ear trumpet gone? Is that it? I think that's gone. Huh, yeah, that's gotta be it. All right, restream chat. You're supposed to go out of... Um, what one is it? Rechat? What do they, what do we call it? Voice chat. Did you get the Hemi version? Yeah, it's so, okay. Now let me see. Maybe it'll work now. Uh, okay, what's up? Is this yours? Yes. Yes. It is. I'm so proud of this. This is the cheapest Model 3. It is cheaper than my Blazer. <laughs> like, that's what's crazy to me. I was looking at lease prices. I was trying to figure out what to replace the Blazer with, and I figured I'd replace something very similar to it, but everything's gone up at least another, like, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks, and I don't want to get the same thing for that much more. So I was shopping around on leases for a little while, and then like I heard Tesla had another price drop, so I went over to the Model 3 website, and I was like, what? I think it's 490 a month. How does leasing work? Uh, you can just set up, uh, so if you go to Tesla, <laughs> go to like tesla.com. Let's look at this. You click on the one that you want, or you can even click view inventory. So this is all the things that are on hand right now, local to me, which means it's in Ohio or Chicago, not in Michigan. There's a whole bunch of them that they're trying to sell right now. Was there a super chat there? So you can click view details. 
you click on this button down here, and you can do cash, lease, or loan. Lease, I put 1,000 down, which turned out to be 1350 down. And now the lease prices have like come back up some, which is surprising, but it was 450 a month is what they were saying. All in all, it turned out to be 490. I was like, what the hell? And that's literally like, they dropped the price to like 49999 on this thing. Crazy. Their upsells are really about like autopilot and longer range and all wheel drive. So it's a rear wheel drive, but with a big battery pack in it. So you don't really like, I don't know, maybe there'll be a couple days where I regret that, but it, I don't know, we'll see. So far, I definitely don't. What do we got? The film trainer with the five, thank you. Thank you for the five, congrats again. Is this not working? This should be working. Woo! What size roll should I use for the Model 3 front windshield? You can use a 36. 36 fits fine. The roof is already ceramic and uh, ceramic and tinted at 2% from what I understand. What's your credit? My credit score is like, has it never been that? It's like, they, they'd say it's like 740 or 750, something like that. Um, somewhere, in, somewhere in that range. I don't know. It always fluctuates. I didn't have very good credit for a long time. I'm leasing it for three years. Uh, three years is, is like the most bang for your buck. It's a little more expensive at two years, a little more expensive, I think, at four years. So it's like most people just do three years. Uh, it's a 10,000-mile lease. You can change it. It's actually really simple to do. Props to them. So then you, like, you click on, like, so I added the mobile connector and the wall connector. I've only been using the mobile connector right now. Um, continue to payment, you basically start to reserve it, and then you go to the app, you upload a picture of your driver's license, you start doing the credit stuff, and then you find out very quickly whether or not you can get one. Um, it, it all happened within like 20 minutes. <laughs> it wasn't hard, it didn't take a long time, it was just kind of like, oh, that was quick. And then being in Michigan, they sell direct, in Michigan, you're supposed to sell through dealerships. So in order to pick up the lease, I figured they would have had somewhere in Toledo. I had to go all the way to Cleveland. So it was like a three hour drive to go pick it up. But it was fun to drive back. So I wasn't complaining too much. If you buy it, uh, they're better on delivery. I think they can, they'll bring it in state and drop it off. They have delivery places, but if you're leasing it, all their lease pickups, because you're cheap. They're like, yeah, fuck that. If you want to lease it, you got to come here, buddy. So it's okay. Any recommendations on hotels for uh, the class in May? Um, if you look in the Utica or Troy area, so I'm in Sterling Heights. I'm going to pull it up. I'm gonna pull it up for you. Um, I keep forgetting to ask people where they're staying, but it can give you some general guidelines. Oops, here. So like around here, uh, the, 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 the mound road, I'm on mound in 18, so I'm like, I'm right here. Um, but if you zoom out and you go, so industrial stuff, I don't think there's any hotels really here. There's some hotels along here, Van Dyke. But if you're in like this general area and up, it gets nicer here. And then if you're in Troy, like you go over in this direction, over this way. Um, Things are just generally nicer over in here. If you start going more south, 
and like to Detroit, that's where things start to be more Detroit. We're not in Detroit. This is like, this is the heart of Detroit right here. We're not there. Detroit Tin Studio, but where's Eminem's house? Seven mile. Um, is this eight mile? It's not eight mile, it's a freeway. Nine mile. Oh, that is. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then it turns into, so this is eight mile. Eight mile, and where did I grow up? So what's funny is that this is eight mile. Eight mile is a long road, man. Eight mile goes all the way in this direction. Like, so eight miles, eight mile covers a lot of ground. Um, movie Eight Mile, I grew up on Nine Mile. <laughs> but it was very much suburbs. Oh, God, that Twitch bot thing again. Hang on, how do I block this? There we go. I was telling a wife you got one. She said probably as percent credit on behold as we got about the same. What? As percent credit. I don't quite understand, but I don't know. They just ask income and a couple of basic things and you just throw a big number in there and fucking Dude, you don't even talk to anybody. It, if you talk to somebody if you want to. It's so easy. Oh, I don't have perfect credit. No, no, no. I, like, I wasn't paying back, like, student loans years ago and shit like that. Do we just, oh, do we have to bring anything to the class or just show up? Yep, you just show up. Everything's going to be here. Oh, shit, hang on. 9408. I gotta check on somebody's order really quick, and then we'll get started. I think they're pretty, uh, they're pretty eager to lease right now, and the prices drop. So, like, if you're interested, it's worth checking out. So you start the reservation process, and I think 250 of that is non-refundable if you don't go through with it. Everything else is just like, you go in the app, you upload a driver's license, give them a little information. Um, it's far less than you do at any dealership. And then you just get a response back, whether or not you're approved for one. And then you start, you know, you do something, like you add it to your insurance. Um, there's like, really simple steps that it walks you through. And then there's some things that it's like, okay, just wait for an update from us because we're getting your vehicle ready. It'll be a couple weeks or it'll be a week or something. So from start time to finish, it was like two and a half weeks, I think. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was shockingly simple. Then you go to the dealership, there's like three pieces of paper for you to sign. They're like, here's the car. Any questions? I'd be happy to give you a tour, but if you're cool, then like, it's up to you. They're so easy. And everything centers around the app, which is kind of interesting. Oh, this one already shipped a while ago. All right, I'm gonna have to get back to that. Love the Ninja Blades and the Glass Aid, the Clearplex community. Oh, that's good to hear. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I tried the new bottle of tin slip way better than the one I received the first time. Glad to hear it. I tried the... Uh, oh, oh, no, I read that. Good. I'm glad you got it. Thanks for giving me feedback on that. 
Can you drive the car from the app, or which one does that? Um, there's, like, enhanced autopilot and some extra features like that. But it doesn't come with those. Like, they're, it's either, like, a $200 a month add-on. There's a basic autopilot, which is, um, which is radar cruise control, is all that is. But that works well. That's really cool. Um, I think the coolest feature that they need to put on every car from that one is, like, there's... You can see your car, and then you can see all the cars around you right on the screen in, like, a really easy-to-understand way. So it's like a traffic monitor, essentially. It's re that part's really cool. So it's easy to see like your blind spots. That's nice. So it, it's like we have the Explorer. So that's like our bigger family vehicle. This is this the the whole goal of this one was like I needed something for work, something that looked nice that I can sell off of, um, and something that's actually like bonus is good for the classes so that's pretty cool um so we're gonna do some back window shrinking on it 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 really just depends on skill level though for that um because i'm gonna have to be watching while we're doing that it, it's really i just don't want somebody to put too much heat on that back window in any one spot but Working on a Model 3 right now, all windows, including the one-piece back windshield. Nice. It's a lot of work. I'm going to do I'm gonna do all the side doors and the windshield. Big disappointment. I'm going to do the back window later. I just have to get a 60-inch roll in the film that I want. And I don't know if they have it in Apex. But I was going to hold off on doing that. And I kind of just want to stream the back window as one. It's not that I can't do it all in... One, I just don't want to have to redo it. I just want to chill. Is the Model 3 rear glass laminate? That's a good question. Uh, I think so. Only because past ones have cracked. Um, but I don't know if that's still the case. I would imagine it says on the stamp. So we can check it out. Is it this one? It is this one. Cool. Hmm? I thought all auto glass? No, like the, the front doors are laminated, the rear doors are tempered. Should I only order a 60-inch roll, 20% for Teslas? Yeah, that's really the only ones, the only car that you're going to be doing. Let's get this, let's get this puppy on. We good? We got a microphone. Hey, we do. Okay, cool. Do I have to bring up TikTok too as well? I guess so. Hang on, let me get, let me fire TikTok up here. Bah! Oh, and then I gotta click this button. And then I got a camera over here. And then I can click. Choose a topic. Go live. Hey, I already went live. Cool. Oh, God. Let's not do that. 
I'm going to use charge if a customer, if someone, if someone comes with film and wants you to put it, what happens? We, we, what? How much do you charge if somebody comes with their own film and wants you to put it on? Oh, that's what happened to me a week ago. Um, I honestly will just charge my base price. If you want a, if you want to order like a DIY kit and do it yourself, then the only way you're really going to save money is by doing it yourself. The only times that I ever get asked or um, end up doing it was uh, was like chameleon films. If somebody, I'm more than happy to install somebody's chameleon film. If somebody just has like a film that they want me to install, the thing is, I'm not familiar with your film. It should go okay. But if I make a mistake, especially if there's like a kit, then I don't have material to redo it. Um, and then I can't warranty anything. So most people don't go with that. Most people end up then going with your own film. You have a business to run, so. I charge $1,100 for ceramic of Model 3. We use Graph Tech Power, two men quality install. It takes us four hours. Nice, very nice. Yeah, the Model 3 is a little bit of a project for sure. So we're gonna get started. Um, I'm going to start with doing one of the doors. I'm doing Apex 2 mil um, on the sides. And then the big bummer was I thought I had 50% for the windshield. But I'm going to do a Pro Nano 50 on the windshield instead because I, I got a little happy with my Apex 2 mil and I used all of it. So I'm a little sad. How much are you charging for this? Uh, I'm not going to charge me anything. This one's mine. So it's on the house today. All right, let me sure, make sure this is all set. Keg is filled. It's ready to go. So yeah, goal is just do sides and front windshield. Nice ride, thank you. <laughs> That's the other thing. With the back window, there's like really good video opportunities too. Um, so, I kind of made a joke about Walmart film on it, but it would be really funny to somehow do like Walmart Model 3 back window. Congrats, thank you. And I'm saving money with it. That, I'm gonna keep preaching that. Like that's what's crazy to me. Is it's like, oh, dang, you fancy now. Bro, it's cheaper. <laughs> what are you doing on the sides and rear? So I've got Apex 2 mil. Uh, we're going to do the fronts in 35. We're going to do the rear in 20. And we're going to do the windshield in 50. This is what um, I like best to show people uh, different shades and sell it. Because if they have questions on, you know, how dark is 50 on a windshield, that's really a nice thing to show people. If somebody wants a darker windshield than 50, well, then the darkest I do is 35, and it's pretty easy to understand from there. Um, then showing the differences between 35 
and 20% is also another big question for people. Because if you want to black it out, just go five. And if you see 20 and you're like, hmm, do you have something kind of in between five and then I talk about 15 and I grab the roll and I can show them that. I almost wanna do this one, put it on the inside, let it dry, and then see if we can like razor off the edge. I'll be honest, I suck at that. I don't know why, but the best luck that I've ever had is using a razor blade. I don't have any good files on hand right now. I didn't do much planning on this one. It was kind of, uh, I got time to do that tomorrow. I guess that's what I'll do tomorrow. I have double layer five on my windows. I got a 2%. You should look into 2% next time. This stuff right here. You guys wanna see? That's a 2% right there. <laughs> it's way dark. Go watch the live streams on YouTube. It looks better there. Oh, interesting. I'm doing what I can here on TikTok. What camera are you using? I have a GoPro strapped to my head. It's a pretty hefty setup. It's not just the GoPro, there's like a battery pack, an HDMI transmitter, and then that goes right to my computer. What's the, what's the risk with tinting tempered glass? Um, no risk, just be careful you don't overheat it. I do look like a cyborg. Yeah, so windshields are tempered. Um, quick little lesson here on tempered versus, um, oh, sorry, laminated versus tempered. Laminated is a glass sandwich, and you can see that really well right here. You have two pieces of glass, and you have a laminate in the middle. Windshields are like that. Some doors are like that. Usually just the front doors for sound purposes, but the other way of making glass is one piece and then this is tempered. So this I think is the cheaper way of doing glass. Um, windshields will crack. So laminated glass can crack, tempered glass can shatter. So the rear doors can shatter, front doors, front windshield, they can crack. So really the worst when tinting is if you're just like really stupid and just you have heat focused on one point for a long time, then you could cause the glass to crack. Other than that, you're fine. You're not gonna hurt it. Where can you find colors in chameleon film? Uh, I actually don't really know because there's a lot of random sites. It all seems like, um, kind of sketchy stuff, and it may or may not last. So I don't have anything here that I actually offer, but if somebody finds something and brings it in, I'd install it. I've done gold. I've done gold. I've done a couple of like the Omnique ones, but nothing crazy. What do you think about Expel films? 
Um, they're they good company. A little more locked down than I like, but hey. Yeah, nobody's, there's no um, manufacturers that I recognize that uh, are making it. It's all like small, tiny individual sites. And best I can tell is you could probably source the same stuff off of like Chinese manufacturing sites. So, I don't know. So, Model 3 defrosters is a good question. They changed the back windows at some point. So, this being a newer one, you can tell by the shape of the defroster lines. The original ones didn't go sideways. They went like down. <laughs> they go straight across and down. They had a little bit of a shape to them. Um, on those early ones, they had a lot of glass problems. Uh, they were cracking. They had to replace a lot of them, not, not from tinting, but just in general. And then, yeah, the defrosters were almost guaranteed to fall off when you had to redo the back window. On the more recent ones, I don't know if that's the case. And that's one reason why I want to be sure whatever I'm going to put on the back window, I might, I'm likely to, uh, to keep it. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm being so particular on these edges right now. Because what I'm going to do is probably going to mess up this window anyways, so we'll see. I should round this more because what the fuck am I doing? Here we go. Please clean the cutting board. Why? Oh, it's so annoying to actually go through and pick all those little pieces off and scrape them off. They get, they get cleaned off once in a while. What about your own board? A dirty peel board means I've been busy. I want to purchase some painting tools. They're not available in Kuwait. What should I do? Uh, I don't know. Rick has the cleanest board. Um, I'm about to tint my windows today. I bought all my equipment off your site. Dang. Good luck, man. I appreciate that. How long do you take on a car all around? Depends on the car. Um, without the front windshield, I like to shoot for uh, two hours or less. But it depends on if I'm streaming. If it's streaming, then I'll happily take like three hours with it. Here in the shop, though, I'll have everything done typically inside of two hours and unless I start just making dumb mistakes. Which happens. Ooh, Chicago Auto Pro is nice. I had a shop ruin my 18 Model 3 rear glass and they paid to replace it. It's a good thing that they replaced it though. Accidents happen. Unfortunately, we're not all perfect. Um, on that back window, you gotta consider too that you could mess it up installing film the first time on it. And then if that tacks up too much to those defrosters, it will peel off the original ones. That's more of a in my, my opinion, that's more of a 
Like, nobody's really at fault here. Because a shop's going to do, like, the best that they can to make sure that the job turns out right. And then if that doesn't happen, like, quickly enough on that, then it's like, well, I'm completely screwed. On the more recent ones, I'll probably find out if that's the case or not. Because, you know, if I peel off my own defrosters, I'm not really going to be sad about it. I don't... I typically don't use my defrosters unless the car was sitting outside. Or like in a parking lot and then it gets some snow on it. But dude, I this has a it has a convection heating setting on it. Oh my god, it gets so toasty. I'll remote start my car and it doesn't get near as toasty as this thing did. There's like a shortcut button. Um, God, what do they call it? Uh, defrost mode. And I thought it would like casually get warm. Boy, that got fucking toasty. I had to like drive to work with all the windows rolled down. <laughs> Shit got hot. You could bake a bunch of muffins. All right, we'll see if we completely screw this one up today. If this window goes well, then I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do on all of them. If this doesn't go well, then fuck it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to start the engine. Yeah, and then you realize how many things are just like, oh yeah, electric heaters are a thing. <laughs> They did a poor job, and there was a bunch of dirt and hairs in the rear glass, and instead of redoing the job, they have to remove all the tent return my money, which pulled off the defroster lines. Yikes. Yeah, that's not a very good shop then. Sorry about your luck on that one. Do you work alone? No, Jack's over there. He's doing all the orders and stuff. <laughs> How do you advertise? Um, I don't do um, any paid advertising right now. Most of what I do is just through the channel, my Facebook group, that kind of stuff, and generally existing and being good to my customers, and then you get referrals from it. If I were to pay for advertising, I'd probably put some money into good old Google ads, um, some Facebook ads, and funnel a lot of that traffic to a nice, clean-looking website, um, along with uh, probably maps ads as well. You always want to have a good place to send them. Facebook's really like lower on that totem pole though. You can reach a lot of people, but there aren't a lot of serious customers there. Another thing is like hanging out in local um, forum groups and stuff. Because there's always, like, a culture around any particular car. So, like, I just joined the, like, local Model 3 group. Thanks to uh, my buddy Nick for sending me over that link. I didn't even think about that. But then there's always opportunities like that. So, like, if you just get involved in, like, that local community, sometimes you can pull some good business from that. but I wouldn't go in there with a super like salesy approach or anything. Just try and like generally be helpful. Okay, that should be good. I think we'll be good on this one. We'll just see if we can trim it. Oh, but earlier somebody was saying that they don't tint Model 3 windshields and stuff like that. Honestly, like, there's just as much to be concerned about a car like this as there is, like, any gas car. 
there's so many sensors, there's so many electrical connections in any car that you just always need to be careful. So just the fact that it's like electric doesn't mean you need to be any more concerned about this than anything else that's out there. I had the bell, but didn't get the alert for the stream. <gasps> Damn. I don't know what to say about that one. YouTube suppression. <laughs> Do it like that. What about tint solution? Is it better than baby shampoo? Uh, if you're having tackiness issues, like your film is sticking a lot when you're trying to apply it, then tint slip is going to be a better solution than that. If whatever you're using is working for you, then there's no reason to switch. Other than just generally being aware of dish soaps not being safe for window tint, baby shampoo is generally safe, but the formulas can change over time. Do you recommend Tesla? Uh, for the money, and if you have the right living situation, yeah, for sure. I stayed happily oblivious to most of what Tesla was doing. And I've tinted quite a few here in the shop. I just never took the time to really learn all that much about like all the individual little features and stuff like that. For me, I need a car to get me back and forth to the shop and run errands. Um, we have our bigger family vehicle and I don't like a lot of downtime and I need it to look nice and be able to sell jobs off of it. So I was essentially looking for the same type of thing that I already had, which was a 2020 Blazer. I was looking for like maybe a newer one, but prices went up and I wasn't that in love with the Blazer. So I really didn't want to spend like 650 700 on it um so i would have just gotten another explorer and then i was looking around and sure enough tesla's dropped their lease prices by quite a bit i wonder how much it'll cost in electricity at the house uh shouldn't be bad i hit a supercharger on the way here that cost me 12 bucks to go from 15% to 75%. So, yeah, it's a good question, but I don't know how much it will cost. We'll find out. Right now, I haven't even wired up the house. I'm just going off with a mobile charger, and that's been more than efficient. Because <laughs> I don't do a ton of driving, and like I said, we've got the family vehicle if we need to go on a road trip or we want to go farther. Um, for most things. So this is really like whatever I was getting was going to be a lighter commute vehicle anyways. And that's why it was like, mm, all electric. We'll see how that goes. Like there's no reason why it'd be a problem, but it's really like, it's really like a, uh, a go-kart. Not a gas go-kart though. Little, uh, what do they call them? Golf cart? It's really like a, a fancy golf cart, is that's what it kind of feels like. <laughs> Do 
Just because there's, it's really simple. You just get in it and you start driving. Like, I don't know. It's fun. I think I'm just going to do this window the way I normally do. Because I still have fingers popping up on the sides from this film overlapping the edges. How long am I going to have to wait to actually like dry this out and stuff? I think this was a mistake. Cost about 30 to 40 dollars a month to charge extra home. That's what I'm guessing. Whereas like the blazer takes uh, 19 gallons of gas and costs typically about $60 to fill it up and I do that about twice a month. That difference isn't isn't going to be huge for me. I mean, I, I understand like there's so many arguments of gas versus electric. I don't really have a horse in this in that race. I don't care. I need it to look good. I need it to get me to work. <laughs> this, this is not going to go well. I need it to look good. I need it to get me to work. Um, and this is a hot topic for window tinning. Uh, and that's a bonus. And on top of that, I'm saving money. So I thought it was a, uh, a cool deal. Do you usually lease vehicles? Um, lately, yes. But for the longest time, no. I always bought my vehicles. Blazer was the first thing that I leased. Can you give a can you give a bit of advice for a noble tinter for back window? I can't get the corners to stay down. Uh, you're gonna have to redo it. Mobile tinter. Yeah, shrinking is always just a difficult thing. We can go over that a lot more on the on the windshield. So stay tuned for that because we're gonna do the windshield. Is a standard or long range? Bro, this is the cheapest one that they had. This is rear wheel drive. This is the cheapest paint color, which is what I wanted because it's white and I like the white. Uh, and I'm just surprised with the sheer amount of stuff that it comes with. Heat seaters, or seat heaters on everything. Heated steering wheel, um, good sound system, wireless charging pads up there. Uh, it's got as much shit on the screen as you could want. <laughs> it's going to be like 10 bucks extra a month for like their connectivity thing. And that's it. Everything else is like, if I wanted to add autopilot, I could buy them. The wheels, these are the cheapest wheels that they have. And I just like that they're black. That's what I wanted. White and black. That's my favorite, uh, theme. And it does not feel slow at all. Can you tint over existing tint? Uh, yeah, you definitely can. Um, most shops are going to be leery to tint over somebody else's tint, though. So you could do it and just not have a warranty. It's just if one of those layers fails, then you're redoing both of them. Um, but if you have tint on the car and it looks fine and you just want to put a layer over it, yeah, go for it. I totally get it. I'm going to say my slip solution is probably too tacky to do this. But this is what I've always run into. Is like the edges curl back. You got to basically like wait for them to dry. You can take off the wheel color. I know. They're basically hubcaps. <laughs> they rebranded hubcaps to make them sound cool. The arrow wheels. It's like, bro, that's... Rough shave the edges so not so much is hanging over. All right, we'll try that. I feel like I'm going to mess this up, though, so we'll see.
Oh, that went better than I thought. This bit right here is driving me nuts. See, this I could probably do pretty damn well. This up here, mm, I'm not quite sure about that. Yeah, it's a little better. Come here, heat gun. To where I probably need that, like, something to soak up a little water. I should grab a card for this. But... I think I'm kind of in limbo where I already cooked the edges a little bit and then it started to roll back. And then what I just did was trap a little air in some spots that I'm not happy about now. But if I do this, why not shave it? I've just never been very good at it. It's probably because they use more soap, is my only guess. Probably just need to get it in that like happy, tacky. Um, this is also Apex 2 mil, so it's a thicker film. It doesn't have like the most aggressive glue, and I'm pretty geared up for it being reasonably aggressive. Yeah, like that little. Make sure that gets out. I got those wet edges. Maybe those will help. This guy. Point five or two. This is the two. See, this is what I look at and. This, this doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, the tint is over the edge because we're going to try and trim it. <laughs> but when it curls back like that, This is probably not the best film to try this with, but here we are, maybe. I'm not shrinking it, I'm just warming it up. I just don't feel like doing this on every window. I'm 
This will take me like an hour per window to do this. C2 is the best looking film that I've seen. Yeah, the C2 is pretty nice. What tools are included for tin class? Um, so we are gonna have a whole bunch of tools. Um, the most notable ones are going to be uh, the CAGS tool belt. Yeah, yeah, I'm not even going to bother doing this. It hangs up somewhere. Yeah, we're just going to do it the other way. <laughs> Fuck that. See how easy that peeled back off of the glass? I'd have to wait a while. So what I don't want to do is have all of them set up that way, wait for them to dry, go back over them, make sure they're all tacked up, and then finish them off. Fuck all that, that's way too much time. So, probably dial back the slip solution, do something on the edge, it's gonna tack up faster, and then you'd be able to handle that way quicker. But this is also the two mil, which is not experimental, but it's new. So, gotta take the time to figure all that out. Can I go buy a tin film at your shop? I'm in Detroit. Everything uh, gets drop shipped, so we don't stock the film here. But you can order it off the site. We have the tools here, though. Would you recommend Workhorse 2 over GCC for beginners? Uh, that's gonna depend on your budget. I've never used a Jaguar, but they're good machines. That's gonna be more of a tint plotter than the Workhorse is. So you're just gonna get a better machine with that. Um, it's gonna have better roller positions. I, if you have the budget for it, yeah, get that. If not, if money's really tight on that, then Workhorse 1 is going to be fine. Workhorse 1, Workhorse 2, they get the job done. They're good machines. They're just going to be a little fiddly. All plotters are a little fiddly, but having good roller positions and stuff is kind of a, a big bonus. All right, let's put that back there. Is Jack gonna be an installer? Um, he installed some stuff yesterday on a family member's vehicle, but he's leaving in August. 
or July? You're leaving in July? Probably August. August? Okay. So probably August. He's going down to college, so he's not going to be a full installer here, but he's going to get some more work under his belt before he leaves. It's always been a little difficult um, because for as much like video teaching as I do in person stuff, <laughs> like, like there's, we got to spend time on making videos, then the store stuff has to be taken care of. Um, so it's not that there's never time, but for just real world jobs in here, they're generally live streamed. Um, or I've got other stuff to do, so then I just end up getting the car done. It's kind of funny how, uh, like, I've, I've had shops reach out wanting, like, private lessons and stuff like that, and it's like, it doesn't make as much sense uh, outside of doing, like, the well put together classes. So anytime you're teaching somebody that always comes at a, a pretty hefty time cost and material too. So a lot of shops have a hard time training new people too. you get a good program down. All right, that should be good. Let's round this out. Let's get that close. This will be like a life lesson <laughs> of why I always go back to doing things the way that I do. <laughs> Kind of crazy, I learned how to tin off your streams, been tinning for two and a half years now. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, that's what's the most, one of the most fun things about this channel. Because at this point, there's only so much I can do with window tinning um, as far as like content goes. So I've always thought about doing other stuff, uh, not bringing them on this channel, just like going in a completely different direction, making more of like an entertainment type show or something. Um, but what I always really like is that people can always learn off of the channel how to uh, learn a skill and have a better life from it. That's always been really important. So no amount of just like sheer entertainment. It's like, it'd probably be fun for a while and then I'd be back to like being bored or something again. You know? We're close, very close. Buddy. You're a legend in the industry. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is 
1.5 Apex have the same problems that Apex 2 mil? No, it doesn't have a problem. Uh, I would get 2 mil over the 1 mil. They're phasing out the 1.5 mil. No, the only thing that we were doing different with the 2 mil was I was trying to overlap it and like shave it off. I just don't have the patience for it on this. I should have, if I were to do it again, I would do less soap. I let it dry, but I just don't like the, I've, I've always had this issue with like every film that I've tried to shave off the edge. You gotta take the time to like heat it up, shave it off, uh, or file it. Um, or you can do it with just while it's wet with a knife, and for whatever reason I keep fucking it up, so. <laughs> do you ever talk to Patrick? Not a lot, no. He's doing good though. He's got uh, dry string prep stuff that's doing well. Um, it seems like he's doing a fair amount of flat glass now. Yeah, to be honest, I don't, I, I've just like, for the past couple years, I've just been really focused on here more than anything else. So, I don't talk to a lot of people. Other than Jack. I talk Jack's ear off all day about business. <laughs> we were just talking about pricing ladders this morning. He's gotten a full-on college business degree here, I swear to God. <laughs> Actually, way better than that. It's too much. It's too much from the beginning. Shaving takes some still. A little bit. Still growing up. What type of tape on the doors? Uh, that's the seal guard tape. Just order some Pro Classic off your site. Want to get some uh, ceramic soon? Nice. Very cool. It's a good film. I just installed Pro Classic the other day. Not everybody gets carbon or ceramic, and that's why I have three options. All right. I watch this go way faster. Oh, that's a good question. Is it worth it to tint the roof on a Tesla? Honestly, no. So if you, there's videos, uh, there's a video that they have on what they do with the glass and they actually laminate a ceramic film. So they essentially have a ceramic window tint already there, and it's very good. It's also a 2%, and I think it needs to be that, because one thing that I was looking up before I even got this was I was seeing if they had any type of a shade that I could throw up there, because I figured it'd be super annoying. So what ceramic does is it, it absorbs the heat into the glass. And so when the car is sitting outside, that heat is still gonna radiate into your car. But when you start driving it, that wind swoops over and carries that heat away. So while it's sitting there in the parking lot, you can put your hand on the glass and it feels really hot. And there's no, uh, 
there's no like headliner barrier between you and the glass. So then you start to feel pretty warm from it. But if you turn on the AC and you tilt it up, then that kind of swoops over your head so you don't feel it as much. Um, and then when you're driving, um, it works really well for that too, obviously. So um, we'll see how it does in summertime because we've had like some sun, but it hasn't been crazy hot or anything. So if anything, I would probably put a physical shade there rather than doing any type of extra film on it. The only, the only other thing that you could do is um, essentially like a reflective film on the inside that will help reflect that heat away, but you already have the ceramic layer there. So it's not like it's gonna do, I don't think it'd do a whole ton for you. It's not magic. See, that went way faster. Should have just done that from the beginning. Da 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 da. That's one. How do you like, how do you like it so far? Uh, I like it a lot more than I thought. So honestly, like a car is a car. And what I, I I'm pretty superficial on cars. I don't really care if they're like super fast. Um, a car gets me from A to B, a nice car, um, like a nice looking car to me is more appreciated because then it just like helps you with sales and stuff. So I haven't really wanted to uh, like, I, I like the color scheme of the blazer and I wanted to stay in that general, general range. So I wasn't like a Tesla fanboy here or anything. I was just looking for something that fit the bill. And I was just really surprised where pricing was at with these things. So, and it's, uh, honestly, I like it way better than I, than I thought. It's got just a handful of features that you actually use that most cars don't have. The biggest one being like your traffic awareness thingy, whatever you want to call it. So when you're driving, you see all the cars that are around you on your screen. Um, and you, so you can tell when somebody's in your blind spot, you can tell if it's a truck or a, um, a car or a semi. So, and it's got turn signal cameras, which I thought was gonna be like way cool, but that whole like vehicle thing where you can see all the traffic around you is like, <laughs> way cooler than turn signal cameras. <sighs> There's a bunch of hidden Easter eggs. Cool. What's the name of the tint you use? Uh, so this is GeoShield's uh, two mil Apex. So this is a, a dual layer ceramic. So it says tinting at once it's essentially like tinting it with two uh, layers of ceramic. So, should be pretty nice. That one's done. Let's go to the next one. I'm out of 35 now. Rip. 
And see, I got 25 uh, in the Apex 2 mil because it's a much more expensive film. It's not crazy expensive, but it is definitely more expensive. They sell, uh, I think, in as little as 25 foot rolls. So if you're thinking about stocking up on it, it's much easier to at least get started with it. Are you squeegee to get the most water out? I'm leaving too much water. Um, the biggest thing is just making sure the blade is flexing. Like you don't have to push super hard to squeegee your windows out. There's always gonna be some water in between the film and the glass. You just wanna make sure that you press some water out and that um, you flex that blade against the glass. And then as that window sits, you'll still see some small water pockets and stuff kind of pooled together. But it'll dry out, so just be patient. That's the drying process that'll happen over the course of like two, three, four days, winter time, up to a week. So you might see a stubborn water pocket stay in there. If there's bright white air pockets, those won't go away. That's air or dirt, usually air left over inside of a dirt speck. But if they're just like little pools of water, that's fine, it'll dry, it'll all dry. I recently tried tinting my truck, had problems with the dot matrix, how do you prep the dots? Ignore the dots. You're always gonna have a silver line, start looking at everybody else's cars and then you'll really notice that it's, it's just the norm. Every car, every car that has a dot matrix um, will silver out and you'll have that border. So you'll just get used to seeing that. So you probably did an okay job on your truck. You just weren't ready for that part. But now once you go to look at other people's cars, then you'll see like, oh shit, and when I say cars, I mean cars. Um, trucks and SUVs have privacy glass. That's the actual glass colored. Um, so if they just do like tint over that, there's no dot matrix to see. Okay, let's do this side. Pull that down. Over. Probably a little more. Yep. Right about there. One, and then they do a nice job rounding this glass so there's not really any snags. That's pretty nice. Some glass is actually pretty rough. I struggle a lot with shrinking around glass aid on the back window, especially on the sides. Fingers start to form and it creases on the sides. Then try removing it and then do some shrinking without it. And then see if you have some better results. If it's getting in your way, just remove it. What glass aid is supposed to do is just help the glass, protect the glass when you trim it out. Um, but you should learn how to shrink. So even during the classes, I, I generally don't teach people with it on, just because it throws people off. Mm. 
you don't, you're not shrinking on the glass aid at all when you are shrinking, but not everybody understands that. You, you always like tack down the sides a little bit and then you shrink near it, but you don't shrink over it um, because you don't need to shrink on the sides. Probably just a hair more. The inside bubble is more than the outside bubble. That's cool. Ba -da -da -da. Anything for this one. I'll take this sharp point away. Oh, dang, I got my finger. I like seeing the top corner so I can actually cut it. But be a little careful on that one. That's going to be fun for the rest of the day. I saw that happening. <laughs> yeah, it just skipped. It's an awkward angle. On the other side, it wasn't so bad. Um, when it's angled away and you're kind of like up, yeah, it's just a goofy angle. It wasn't even bad, but it's going to keep doing that for a little while now. I heard that sometimes on Tesla's there's a risk of windows cracking. Do you know if that's true? Yeah, on the early models, but it's not from tint. It's just from um, the vehicle flexing and Tesla <laughs> pushing boundaries when it comes to the amount of glass that you can put on a vehicle. This gets really frustrating because there's no good way, like, Misinformation spreads so quickly because people don't pay attention to like the details um, or they hear a little bit here, they hear something over there, and then they I don't know if I have been do we got I don't know if it would help they get wet if anything they get annoying, but maybe. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, misinformation. Like still anytime window tint gets brought up on sunroofs, it's like, oh, I heard their crack. And it's like, well, when did you hear that? Did you ever see one? No, I still have yet to see one. But people keep saying that they hear and blah, 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 blah. So on the early Model 3s, Common sense is no longer a thing. No, I, I, I don't even see that. They think people are always dumb. <laughs> it's common sense is actually not common is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, so with the original Model 3s, Tesla had issues with the glass. Um, people would just dry their Model 3s and then they would break. And so people would also tint them and they kind of put two and two together and thought that was the case. But it was just, you know, over time, um, it was just the vehicle was flexing. The glass needed to be put in differently or made better or something. Um, and they corrected that. Another thing was like the defroster lines. It's like, oh, goody. 
they just had poor quality on the rear defroster lines. So St. Gobain was making the glass. And dude, it is a big piece of glass. They were, there's no doubt that there's some engineering challenges that went into all of the sheer amount of glass that they have on this car. But then it happens defrosters peel off and then everybody's like oh you can't put tin on defroster lines it peels off and it's like no 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 just because a motor blew up on that car doesn't mean it's gonna blow up on your car and slow down there i saw the tell you rides and the palisades are some of them are starting to light on fire that's fun is my car gonna light on fire i hope not I have a question about the frost lines on my back window. I have a pre-cut pre -cut tint kit for a 12 Impala. What kind of obstacles does the fruit defrost lines create? Don't even think about them. Tint right over them. Um, every car has rear defrost lines uh, and they all get tinted right over. It doesn't have any extra obstacles on your Impala versus anybody else, else's cars. Have fun. Still bleeding. Not as much though. It'll stop eventually. Maybe when I'm done with the car. Sneaks down, peel that seal back, scoops those up. <sighs> Don't get stuck. That's what I started to do on the front door. Good. This should be good. Have you used the Blue Max? Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a good squeegee.
On the back window, after you use a dryer sheet, uh, do you have to do a wet line? Uh, with the films that I use, in most cases, no. If there is, if you can feel some sort of an overspray, then you might have to. But make sure that you're using uh, snuggles. Other than that, I can't guarantee that whatever dryer sheets that you're using, you're gonna have the same results. Anytime you start changing up variables, it's where you start having little different experiences. So yeah, there were definitely times with dryer sheets that I would have to use something else um, or like create a little wet line. I never really thought about it very much, but it's not, it's not very hard to just like, I'll just, I would usually just take my hand and just like pick up the film, put a little water underneath, and then that's it. Wow. I wonder if I, this is like, I feel like this is not very far down, <laughs> but then they end the glass here. I hope this isn't too far down here. Is Sprayway good to clean tint? Yes, Sprayway is great. Any uh, ammonia-free glass cleaner is good. There we go. There should be two. Nice. Nice and dry. Oh, looks like they haven't gotten all the apex out of the apex. Cool. All right, two done. Let's go over to the other side. I see contamination. <laughs> do you, do you actually, or did you see a little spritz on the outside of the window and go, that's definitely contamination? <laughs> contamination. Isn't contamination like a little bit strong of a word? That's what's always been funny to me, too. It's got contamination. It's contaminated. Is the white squeegee hard or soft? Is it, am I using a white squeegee? That we're gonna bring this down. It's contaminated. I forget what that's from. Maybe an old TV show reference. I'm trying to remember what that's from. There was a little girl in a show, and she said, "It's contaminated." That's what I think every time somebody's like, "It's got contamination." <gasps> How dark is that? Uh, so this is 35 in the front, and it's 20 on the back.
That's one. Scraping tent sucks. You got a removal. Removals are not fun. You schedule as few removals as I possibly can. I'm lazy to scrape tent. Why do I want to scrape tent? You lose money doing it. It just depends on how it's set up. That's one of those things where you gotta pay somebody else to do it for it to make sense. Your best asset is installing film. So the more you can put into that, the more money you're gonna make. Scraping tent is one of those additional things where you can usually tint more vehicles in the time it takes you to scrape vehicles. So just purely business it doesn't make sense. Unless you just charge a lot more for it. not seem right. Oh no, it is right, okay. Got that feeling for a second like it was backwards. But it's not. Yeah, these are a little goofy. Model 3s are not quite as big as the Model Ys. The Model Y door windows are much taller. But same same basic shape and everything. I kind of figured they used like the exact same size windows, but I don't think they do. See, I'm right-handed, so it's way more comfortable on this side. But on the top corner, like the other side, that's where things really got a little, a little crazy. Nice. See, and then we're gonna move everything to the bottom. Squeegee down to where I can before I see big fingers start popping up. And then I'm gonna stop shy of that and then we're gonna shrink it all. Thank you for the roses. Show me machine. This machine? The workhorse? This is a workhorse too, it's a plotter. I use it sometimes. What do you wanna know about it? I won the giveaway from high tech. Came with a lot of tin tools. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I saw they did one the other day. They're doing good. They're doing real, real good. That is, uh, I think the conversation now is gonna be high tech or geo. I think that's what I'm gonna hear more often than anything in the, in the next like year.
Is, is Plotter Depot... Is Plotter Depot the only place that sells the Workhorse One? Uh, yeah, because it's their Plotter brand. It's out of stock. That sucks. It's a good machine. I don't know what the other one is. It's like the Titan or something. So if you wanted a plot, like that exact plotter, just the only thing is make sure that it's got rollers on the rear. I heard that the other day from somebody I had a phone call with. He had bought like a Titan plotter or something and it was a little cheaper. Um, and it's like, eh, as far as I know, I, I don't remember if it was the Titan. Titan is the same thing? Okay. Um, the only thing to make sure is that the rear, that there's rollers on the rear. Like most things, it's a, it's a branding war. But they're actually getting their own machine developed. That'll be the Workhorse 3. That'll come out, I think, sometime this year? I don't know. I'd ask them, though. I have the base paint that has those rollers. Okay, good. Because I don't know what that one guy got, um, but he ran into that where it had like a vinyl roller on the rear. And he, I didn't even know that was like a thing. So you're gonna basically have two metal bars that you put the film onto. That's the best way to cut film. Titan 2 is $700 cheaper. Okay, as far as like, as far as I know, it's one of those things where it's like, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, then it's typically a duck. Um, but sometimes you find that there really is little differences between them. But I have not bought one over the other. So there you go. <laughs> I call it as I see it though. I get really frustrated at um, some window film companies, plotters, like there's a lot of that that happens, software. So, <sighs> what's up man? Hope you're having a great day. Thank you. Machine send water to me. You're not. Oh, oh. This thing, like the keg. The machine that sends water to the window. Uh, so this is a tint keg. It's a three gallon tint keg. Um, it's a big air compressed tank. It's cool. I like it. It's been helpful. That's why it worries me, sacrificing quality for money at this point. Hmm. Oh, is factory tints a thing or is it tinted to the dealership? No, uh, so factory privacy glass is just the same glass. They just color it when they make the glass. And you'll see that on trucks and SUVs across the US. You're not gonna see that on sedans. Sedans and coupes have to have clear glass all the way around. So you can tint over it, um, but if you wanna just do, you can't, you can't do anything to remove it. It's just the way that the glass is, whether you like it or not. problems learning how to shrink I'm trying to tint learning how to shrink an Ultima front windshield what kind of advice can you give me 
Uh, the back window is going to be a little bit easier than the windshield on that car. Um, and a handful of the most recent YouTube videos has about as much info for you as I could possibly give you on how to shrink. But we'll still talk about shrinking on this windshield. Nobody has done a comparison between the two. Well, you're getting into such like niche things. There's like probably nobody that has a Titan II and a workhorse. You're either gonna buy one or the other because why would you ever have both? In order to do a review, you have to have the things. Watched plenty of videos, took me a whole 40 inch by 100 roll before I learned how to drink. Mm hmm. That's most people. Watch videos, keep practicing, pay attention to what they're doing, and use the exact stuff that they're using in the freaking video. Oh my God. That's what dry, oh, I had, I had this guy call and he's, he's a nice guy and I almost just lost it. <laughs> it like sounded like he wanted to, he, he was learning how to tent and he was like interested in buying film and tools. So he hadn't even started. And he was basically debating me on like different things that he could use and buy and try. And it's like, do you want my help or do you not? So people just throw out generic things like dryer sheets and heat guns and blah, 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 blah. Try and, try and make sure like if you're learning I would go for the exact same stuff that the dude is using. And there's a few recommendations on like less expensive films, but the other things are not expensive. And what I mean on that is like dryer sheets. It's like, yeah, dryer sheets work, but every dryer sheet's gonna be a little bit different. So unless you know how to adapt to the differences, you're not really gonna know if what you're using is really gonna work for you or against you. But if I were to use it, I could tell you one way or another if, yeah, this is a good option or if it's not. But it doesn't make sense for me to go out and buy every type of dryer sheet to just sample them. So, I don't know. That conversation had me like pretty spent. He's like, you use dryer sheets. I was thinking about using uh, using Irish Spring because I saw some uh, people mention Irish Spring. And it's like, bro, do I use Irish Spring? No. Why are you asking me? There's too, there's so much information out there. You just gotta be, be a little careful on cherry picking one thing from this person, another thing from that person. So when it comes to like a squeegee blade, a blue one to like a yellow one to a red one, the hardness is gonna be different. There's gonna be a little bit of a feel difference between the two. Is there going to be a huge insulation difference? No. No, there's not. But when it comes for, like, the heat gun, I would recommend getting a Wagner. When it comes to the dryer sheets, use Snuggles. And just be careful about some of those major differences there.
Film Cut is DigiCut. Yeah, they got a free trial of Film Cut, too. Tint Studio, and you can get a free trial of that. But yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, 313tint.com. That's my uh, store site. Do you always get a perfect install? How's the installation in the enclosed area? No, I definitely don't always get a perfect install. I have my fair share of fuck-ups. You should have seen the beginning of this stream. <laughs> Um, your environment can help. Uh, the major thing is to tint indoors. Or in an area that you can stay out of the sun and control the wind a little bit. Most of it comes down to install, though. Workhorse 2. How much shrinking will I need to do on rear and front windshield? <sighs> All right. Plotters cut your film. They don't shrink it. So that's all they do is they cut the pattern out. So then you, don't, you still have to shrink it the exact same as if you hand cut it. They don't magically do something to the film. So where plotters mostly help is when you suck at cutting, they'll help speed that part along. And then if you mess up a pattern, you can go cut it back out on your machine and then shrink it and install it again. Boy, we're losing it today, though. <laughs> I have an enormous amount of patience. Some days are better than others. <laughs> Just. Whew. I think what it is. more than anything is like, I'm genuinely trying to help people as much as I can. And when I feel like they're not trying, like they're like half-assed learning and asking questions, but not really like looking into it very much, it's just kind of like, yeah, what about this? What about that? What it? Then it's like, I'll lose my patience because I'm trying to like thoroughly explain stuff but then they're not really paying attention. So like, if you don't care, why should I care? Just like when mistakes happen. It's like, I have a lot of patience for mistakes, but then when mistakes happen repeatedly over and over and over again, it's like, okay, we need to like do something to try and prevent that mistake from happening. Maybe do half the glass for now. When you get the larger roll in, you can remove and test those defrosters. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that today. I'm sure over the course of the three years that I'm leasing it, at some point, whatever I put on it, I'll be pulling it off the back. Do you offer glasses? Yeah, 313tint.com. It's got all the class info. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Check that out first, though. It's got the dates and stuff. I post the dates and then I don't remember. Is this your new lease? Yes, this is the new Model 3. Is there a difference between shrinking Pro Nano and Pro Classic? No, no, not really. Pro Nano is a two mil. 
Pro Classic is a one mil dyed film, but as far as like, they're both really easy and fast to shrink. If anything, like Pro Nano shrinks a little quicker. <laughs> Twin Turbo Edition. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Nope, man. We went so base on this. And do you know what I realized? Besides the wheels and a badge, the difference is so... like non-existent other than like the things that you live with. But what people see, dude, they're all the same. They all look the same. <laughs> the only people that know are Tesla people. So as far as most people are concerned, I just spent a lot of money on a car. I'm actually saving money right now, which is amazing. Yeah, it's all software, range difference, and wheels, that's it. That's like the only difference is, you want a heated steering wheel, they all come with it. You want fancy app connectivity, they all come with it. Will you sell the dry shrink prep kit on your website? Uh, not yet. Um, Sun Distributing has them. So you can go to sundistributingdirect.com um, for dry shrink prep. I've got the Snuggles dryer sheets though. So if you don't even know what Snuggle went to buy, like I literally go to the store, we buy them, and then we put them on the site. What's the most expensive car that you've tinted? Uh, it's not a crazy list. It was probably the, I, there was one day where I did a McLaren and a Aston Martin DBS in a day. But it's been a while. Have you ever thought about being a guest on Jason's Tinter Tuesday. Uh, not really. I mean, I have never talked to him, but sure. I don't really talk to a lot of other people. <laughs> just, I don't know. <laughs> it's not like intentional. It's just, I'm really focused on the things that I'm doing and uh, usually, like, not a lot of other people seem to talk much in my group other than, like, people trying to learn and stuff. So I don't know why that's the case, but that's how me and uh, Marco, Mr. Mr. Planet Fitness, um, kind of got things started with the whole Matico thing is because he started posting some stuff in the group and I was like, oh, that's cool. You should do some longer videos. Yeah, I know the show. I've seen it. Um, I've browsed it. Um, like, I've seen it popped up once or twice. Big fan, I'm glad you're doing a frameless door today. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Melbourne. I'll watch it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't blame you. Oh, cool. He made a post, interested in a new guest. Yeah, if he wants to hit me up, that's fine. Sure. Been thinking of getting Apex Ultra 2 mil. Will I need to change the setting on my plotter since it's a two versus one and a half mil? 
Uh, I do have the two mil, that's what we're installing now. You probably have to adjust your settings. Um, I haven't tried to cut it out on a plotter, so I don't know what that setting change would be, but you just have to increase the pressure a little bit and you should be fine. That's always a trial and error thing on your own end. Just like going from Pro Classic to Pro Nano, Pro Classic is a one and a half mil. I'll generally have my plotter, like, so if, it, if I cut Pro Classic at like 55, then I'm generally bumping up that plotter to 70 uh, in, in order to cut Pro Nano. It's like a rough guide. It's usually like 15 to 20 grams of pressure more. But go light, do some tests, and you'll figure it out pretty quick. What's a better way to tack a rear window on the newer Ford Escapes around the black border? Um, you mean like get it to stick to the dot matrix? There isn't really anything that you do for the dot matrix. All dot matrixes are the same. They're going to silver out. That's just how they are. Don't look at them too closely. Let them do their thing. There's just no good fix. The only way to fix it is like you'd have to sand it flush to the glass and it's such a small dot matrix. Do doors need to be lashed? on the Porsche Taycan. Um, I haven't done a Taycan, but if they shift up and down, then yeah, you'd have to latch the doors or do whatever you need to do on that car to get them to stand up. Just like this, doors shift up and down. They're currently latched, that made them stand up. I did an old Mercedes the other day that had a push button. Had to make sure that was pushed in. So, just depends. I don't know what they do on the Porsche Taycan, but yep, if they shift. You need to stop them from shifting. Oh yeah, I got to do rear quarters too. Ugh. Why do you razor? So I razor the glass just to make sure that there's nothing stuck to it. Just depends on how thorough I want to be that day. So with a frameless door like this, it's shutting against a rubber trim. So there could be residue from that rubber trim that sticks to the glass. Want to remove that. Um, or there could have been like a dealer sticker. I don't really know. If they have dealer stickers ever on the glass, it wasn't on the glass when I got there. I just want to make sure it's clean. That's all. Stickers, miscellaneous things that are stuck to it. Um, when it comes to cars that I know better, usually there's like a theme there. Yeah, most 
most any imperfections are just going to come from uh, installation. So. <laughs> are all triages created equal? I can't tell if there's actually a difference. Uh, so there is a difference on paper. In person, like, I always think that what they tell you kind of plays into that. That's what I've always thought with, like, the hybrid. I can't feel a difference between the blue side and the or side as a whole, so I can press on them and I can see a difference between the two. But when I'm using the squeegee, it's like it all works together. I don't know. The blue ones are supposed to be kind of in between. The yellow ones are supposed to be harder. Um, and the pink ones are supposed to be like the softest. So everybody has like their preference, but they don't really feel hugely different one to the next. Um, I always thought like the yellow material was like incredibly smooth. A lot of people tend to just order the blues or the pinks. The orange ones are like the awkward stepchild. It's, uh, I don't like the orange ones at all. Those ones are like noticeably harder and weird, but everything else is pretty much in line. Super. Look at this thing, it's still scooting. Wow, no wonder. Okay, perfect. I use the yellow. The green ones that I have are supposed to be modeled after the yellow. They're just like really friggin' good though, so I don't know. <laughs> Super chat. Rodney Rodriguez with the two. Thank you. Learn how to dry shrink because of you. I appreciate that. That's super nice. Thank you so much for the two. What was it? What was it that you did that allowed you to shrink? Was it lots of practice? Was it, what is your secret? Do people want to know? Thank you for the roses, by the way. I appreciate those. What's a good price for a box of tint? Uh, just entirely depends on the film that you want to buy. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot more to tint than just tint. But a good quality film, like a Color stable dyed is going to be in the range of 200 to like 250 for like a 36 inch roll. It's kind of like a nice gauge. Things that are much cheaper than that um, are just not going to be as nice of a quality. Things more expensive than that um, are usually through one of the upper tier brands, but you're not really paying for film quality. It's more for brand recognition at that point. All right, we're gonna give this a good scrub down. I'm not gonna cover up the camera. I'm gonna do what I usually do and that's I will have a line right at the bottom and then I'll be able to live with it and we'll see if it hurts the car. I've never heard of any problems though. Doing a rear quarter windows last, apparently. I just don't feel like doing them right now. <laughs> I just wanna get from the doors right to the windshield. Yeah, this is starting to uh
That's interesting. Wasn't expecting that. Frameless doors, huh? Gonna have to give them a little update. That's a really easy thing to fix, but I wasn't expecting that. So it's all good. This is all good, except for here. All right. I used to wet shrink. We get a lot of side fingers. Now everything lays flat and smooth. Save me time. I appreciate it. Plus, I tried the new shrink that you have been using works like butter. Oh, hell yeah, that's awesome. I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try teaching that at the, the class here, and I can talk about it again, because I've got like tons of shrinking videos, things that have been posted for a long time on the channel are, are how I usually do things. But then I was actually trying to make a TikTok type video, and the idea was taking all the thinking out of shrinking, <laughs> just trying to make it like as simple as possible, because when you're learning, you really have to take time to kind of, like, you, you have to watch how the film is reacting with your heat gun, so it's a very visual thing, where like you look at it, you watch it shrink and then you smooth it out a little bit. And the more familiar you get with that, the m faster that you are at shrinking. But there's a little different way that you can shrink. And the thought behind it was you can add, you always can add more heat but too much heat and you'll burn it. But the thing is, if you hold your heat gun as close as possible, or like within like half an inch to an inch, and move it fast, then you don't really shrink it very fast at all. So if you slow down a little bit, all of a sudden everything starts shrinking very smoothly. You have all the heat that you need, and you can just keep making simple passes. And it's now really easy to, uh, to shrink damn near anything. How did you go about selecting brands when you first started? Um, when I first started, it was for another company. So they, they were using Lumar. And overall, I was pretty happy with the film. Like We were just using ATC, which I think gets dogged on. Um, but it was great for us. It looked nice. It shrank well. I really liked it overall. I was with that for like a couple of years. And then they just got tired of paying that premium on the film. Um, so then we switched to like a different brand. I'm trying to remember who we switched to. Um, but then what I really remember is when I was mobile. Um, we started with ASWF and we installed their cheapest line of film because we were doing wholesale window tinting. It was just about getting jobs done. Um, so we'd go around to different companies. We'd tint cars. They'd sell a tint job, and then we'd do a tint job. Um, so I'm, I was familiar with like a handful of other brands, and I've tried stuff from over the years from just having a channel and whatnot.
There we go. But there's a lot of marketing out there. I think it's really helpful to just kind of follow the Facebook group. So facebook.com slash groups slash window tint. The window tint stuff group is a really, really big group. People are talking about different films, how to tint, and stuff like that. And you kind of get a sense of what, um, what types of films people are using and stuff like that. Just Because there's a lot of marketing out there and everybody's marketing kind of looks the same. So you don't really know until you start spending money on film like one versus the next and go through that like experience. I'm a fan of Geo, but just because I'm a fan of it doesn't mean that everybody's gonna be a fan of it. but they're definitely a good choice. <sighs> Last time I dry shrunk a rear window, just when I was done, something happened. The whole back window was covered with water. What? It was the best thing that happened to me. More fingers appeared and what? Made me do more shrinking for new fingers that appeared. It was easiest rear window installation. So you like, after you shrunk it, you sprayed it, and then it caused more fingers to pop up at the bottom. That's kind of interesting. I do something after I shrink to always prevent fingers from popping up. So when you, when you shrink a back window and everything lays flat, and then you trim it, there's always opportunity for little things to kind of pop up after you trim them. Because you kind of, you basically like, you shrunk it and then you trimmed it and then you trimmed in half of areas that you shrunk. So you have to kind of flatten out those edges again. But I kind of like that idea of literally just like, if you spray the edges, then you get a more instant visual option. Maybe we'll try that after this. That's, that's an interesting idea. So what I'll do is, after I'm done shrinking it, I trim it, and then I take the heat gun and put it close to the edge. But you don't really see that stuff before you hit it with heat. You usually see it after you've hit it with heat. So that again, that goes back to like, you kind of have to think about it and know what you're looking for a little bit. So it's really easy to show people at like the class, but any way that we can make this a little bit more straightforward and easy. I'm down. So like doors are significantly easier when you, you just like pull seals and you bottom load them. So that's always an option. Shrinking, we'll go over making that easier today. And then installation is always gonna kind of be the bitch on uh, windshields and back windows. <laughs> There's only so much that you can do. Would you say it's easier to tint side windows by taking the glass out of the door? No, take the seal out of the bottom of the car and then you'll have a, an easier time. So we'll even use that snuggles sheet today. So I lightly spray the window, soak down the sheet, coat the entire glass, again, snuggle, I'm not trying to sell snuggles. I'm just like want everybody to fucking be on the same page with what we're gonna do here. Then I gotta let that completely dry. So you should have a nice dryer sheet, waxy surface on that glass. And then you can tell it's dry when you take your hand and you wipe it over it and you don't leave any more smears. It'll feel completely dry. So right now it's wet, and if I do this, oh, I drew a trail in it. See, it's wet. It's like paint. You just gotta let it dry.
But here's the thing. Um, taking the glass out of the car is like a whole nother thing. And if you're trying to tint multiple cars in a day, and you literally have to like, you have to pull the panels apart, unscrew the glass from the mechanism, and take it out. There's some people, uh, this is mostly in overseas things, there's some countries that's actually what they do. Um, but they kind of like learned and trained that way. I think it's still a bit of a headache to do, but I can understand where some people are coming from on it. So hey, you want to do that? Go for it. The easiest way to install um, is going to be just getting the obstacles out of the way. And so you can literally pull the door panels off, or you can pull the door panel back and pull the trims out. And then you don't have to pull the glass out of the car, and you can just drop the film in with very little headache, and you didn't have to remove a whole bunch of things. That's basically what I did on this without pulling the trims out. Yeah, this is 50. Yes, that's another good point that I was going to bring up, but I forgot, so thank you. Uh, taking the glass out, you might nick the tint when you're putting the glass back in. That's very true. If you've ever watched somebody install um, if you ever watched somebody install door windows, um, it's a bit of a puzzle trying to literally fit the glass. It's not as simple as just like pulling it out. Especially when you have a frame, you're bumping that piece of glass into the framing. So the glass can take a little bit of abuse. But if there's tint on it, it'll immediately get scraped up. So just be really conscious of that if that's what you want to do. The happy medium consensus is most people like to just pull the trims. So past that, no need to reinvent the wheel. The only thing about the tint rack, so I did a little mod on mine for a few of the rolls. I pulled the tape off of this one. They suggest to put a piece of tape on it, um, or they're going to make different mounts. What I did was I put a little piece of electrical tape here, so it adds a little friction. So if your rolls are starting to kind of unroll on themselves, a little bit of friction there will keep that from happening. The yellow roll clamps work. I've seen those. I don't have any of them here, though. But I didn't like the idea of like having to put tape back on a roll clamp. Um, so I put a little piece of uh, electrical tape there, and now they don't unroll. When I said it needs to be completely dry, there's still a little bit of wetness there, so we're going to make sure that's dry. This is a big old windshield. This is a 36 inch roll. Um, uh, this is Pro Nano. 
it would be apex, but I had a 25 foot roll of it and then I didn't realize that I used all of it. They sent me a fair amount of the one and a half mil samples. The two mil is more clear. So it was either Pro Nano or the two mil. So we're going with the Pro Nano 50. It'd actually be a nice thing to compare uh, the side windows to the windshield on this then. Pro Nano is a hell of a film. Like, whenever we hear two layers more better, we're like, ah, I gotta get it. But, I mean, I still do Pro Nano on all my customers' cars right now. It's a hell of a film. It's just gonna suck if I have to remove it. Tough crowd, why, what do we say? Oh, that one. I'm still exploring different types of films. I think that's a good thing. Try some different things, see what you like. If you like it, I can guarantee, I can guarantee your customers are gonna like it too. All right, so we're gonna get into shrinking this. Doors a little in the way because it's a car. But anyways, all right, so what we're gonna do, this is, there's quite a few videos about this. Heat gun all the way up. What I've done is I have put Snuggles dryer sheets underneath, I let it dry. I literally take a felt card, I pull it straight in the middle, and then I lightly tack down the edge and I just kind of straighten them out. So this is laying on 100% flat. Same thing with the top. That's laying 100% flat. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take the heat gun and then we're going to put it about this far away from the film. We're gonna just go straight across the whole way. See, I can do this with my hand and I feel some heat, but I'm not burning myself. If I slow down, ouch, it starts to get hot. So same thing with here. We're just gonna make passes starting with when the film starts raising off the glass a little bit, just go straight across. Then go about two inches down from there and then you just keep making passes. So if you're going really fast and the film's not really doing anything, then just slow it down a little bit and you'll see it'll start doing something. And then just keep going through the entire window. There'll be areas towards the bottom that like I could shrink that more, but just chill out. So what we're gonna do now is this has already shrunk some. So then I'm gonna pull it from the bottom and anywhere that might be stuck to the glass is then gonna loosen up. Just pull it straight down, then take a felt card and start smoothing those areas out until you see the film starting to point back straight up. So until you start seeing it bunch back up, see all that? We need to shrink it more. So then you can pull back, release the film a little bit. So now it's nice and even. And you're gonna do the same thing again. Heat gun really close. Pull it up, put it back down. This will work with like any film. It doesn't matter. Some films will shrink a little faster than others. You just have to make more passes. That's basically it. So then you can, again, sweep over all the areas that look flat. Push everything down. We got some little fingers here at the bottom. So sticking with the theme, you can pull back on the film just a little bit. Then you take the heat gun 
and then go over those edges, get everything to flatten back out, and you're all shrunk. So this swoopy bit here, leave that alone, we'll catch it on the other side. But now we can go to the top and do exactly what we did at the bottom. See? Lay the film flat, heat gun, Yeah, we're gonna do this at the class and see how fast we can get people shrinking. But there's like little to no thinking on this. It just works. So you go through that, pull it. Okay, I pulled it. And I take that felt card and just start smoothing the film. All this is doing is organizing the film. I'm just seeing what's laid flat and pushing some bulk film up. And then we get up to here. Again, give it a nice little pull, get it to kind of even out. Take that heat gun again, go straight through. Remember, this is a big windshield. This max is out at 36 inch. There aren't very many regular car windshields that are this tall. This is a big, reasonably curved windshield. See, make up a little ground. Oh look, film's bunching up. Back off, pull that down again and then go over it again. The more film that you have to shrink together, which is out towards the edges, you're gonna have to go a little bit slower. Because you'll notice you'll be making passes and you're not really shrinking it anymore. So then slow down your speed, keep the same distance. But just keep that heat moving straight across. And look, we made some more ground. Got a little bit more left. Got this little guy here. This is really like a handicap way of shrinking until you get used to what you're looking for. A few little guys at the very edge. And there you go. It's all shrunk. That's one side. You can do the same thing with the other side. I'm literally glued to the screen. <laughs> so we'll let the heat gun heat up, and we'll do the same thing with the other side. This will take longer. because I know about how much heat I have to throw at it, um, and then I can keep both of them moving together. To take the time and go all the way across, come back, all the way across, and come back, like it's not gonna be fast, but it's gonna be very consistent, and you'll really get a feel for what you need to look for the more you do this. So remember, this is flat right now, and then Keep that, and then just start going across all the way. You stop at really like the halfway point. So we do like half of it on one side, we come back and we do half of it on the other side. So the more I've done this, I have a good reason why it's nice to start on one side, end at the other, and then come back and again start here. When you hit the film with heat and then you take that heat off, 
the film is not completely done shrinking yet, it'll continue to shrink a little bit because it soaked up a lot of heat. So as soon as you pull that heat gun away and you watch it, it'll start to shrink down a little bit farther. So going all the way across, letting that cool down, this is already cooled now, and then you come back over. I think that's what helps this work really, really nicely. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't keep going back and forth and back and forth, but don't confuse yourself. Just do it this way, and then when you get comfortable, then start playing around with options. Don't confuse yourself too much. All right, see, whole thing, we're like, mostly done shrinking this already. See, parting it down until I have all these peaks here. So then we're gonna kind of free those up a little bit. So then they'll shrink more evenly. And we'll do this again. This pull method was the best thing I learned from you. Cool. I just came up with it not too long ago. <laughs> I mean, because I was taught heat gun. I, I was taught like I teach. Heat gun, you kind of watch for the film. But this kind of allows you to shut off your brain. All right, so we're not doing the back window today. Would this work on the back window the same way it's gonna work on this windshield? It's a big back window. Um, I don't know, it might. So the only areas where I'd be a little bit concerned is areas that are really bunched up. So this, this is a pretty tall finger right now. So I'm just, I don't want to overheat that. So I'm still gonna move it, still gonna keep it close. I'm just gonna keep that heat moving. We'll put some heat on it. We'll let it do its thing. And then we'll see what it looks like as we get closer. Yeah, see? If I put too much heat when it's peaked up like that, I'm gonna have a bad day. So, let's get through the whole thing. Let's pull it, let's organize some film and see what it looks like. This looks nice and shrunk. Start smoothing this wave out. that actually readjusted and now this isn't near as big as what it was. Do you see it do that? It was pushed all the way up and because I kind of pulled it, um, feathered it down, now it's not as bad. I got a little bit more of a finger here because there's always more curve here, so keep that flat. And then run down the whole thing. All right, cool. Now it's smaller, so we're gonna pull it, loosen it up. See how that cards down. 
Most of the center is all laying flat. That's nice. Pull this back a little bit. I'm going to tell people these are Bill Nye the selling this guy. See, I'm really going through the same steps here. I think it's healthy to do that just so you understand what you're doing. Every time you're pulling the film, what you're really doing is like there'll be little parts of the film that kind of snag um, against like a dryer sheet or dry shrink prep, it'll stick a little bit. So when you pull it, you kind of like loosen it up. So then when you smooth it down, it doesn't catch anywhere. That's all I'm really trying to do. I could work this faster um, just by looking at it, but again, we're taking all the thinking out of this and we just knocked down that whole rest of it. We didn't have to do anything different. We got this whole Model 3 windshield shrunk and so now we're gonna trim it out. And then after I do that, um, I'm gonna reheat the bottom edge a little bit, reheat the top edge a little bit, like I always do, but cool. It's nice that it worked on such a curvy piece of glass. Thanks for all the videos. You are welcome. Do all of these have a glass roof or isn't an option? No, they all come with it. I was surprised. I got to give them credit where credit's due. I thought, okay, so I have like a panoramic roof in the blazer. Uh, we often close the shade. On that roof is 20%, and that's what most sunroofs are tinted at. But thankfully, the Model 3 uh, and all the other ones, they're tinted really dark and they also put a layer of ceramic because the people that made them actually drove them. <laughs> and it's just, that ceramic's gonna soak up a lot of heat and while it's sitting out in the parking lot, you're gonna feel it. Uh, but while you're driving, just like ceramic tint, air moving over the glass is gonna take away that heat. But you can point your uh, air conditioning up a little bit and kind of do the same effect on the inside, which is nice. But they tint it so dark too um, that so far on a bright sunny day, it hasn't been like any extra annoying. I thought like the glare off of it might be annoying, but it's actually pretty good. Yeah, the back window on the Model 3, 60-inch roll, uh, sideways, absolutely, all day long. It's very tall. A 40-inch 40 40 roll just isn't big enough. Um, so if you want to do it all in one piece, which, I mean, some people do it not in one piece, and it's a bit ugly. How much is the full cost in ceramic for a Tesla like this? 
Um, I'd charge about a grand for everything with the back window. The 60 inch roll um, has to be ordered ahead of time as well. Because, I mean, I have a handful of 60 inch rolls from all the other Model 3s that I do, but it just, I didn't have a, I actually don't have a 60 inch 20% in ceramic. So, I gotta order one of them. Sticking. There's that one. I'm gonna jump over on the other side and finish that. So like any of these camera systems, they're always making adjustments, software updates. They're playing around with them. They're newer tech. I'm not going to do anything to screw with that. So, um, I'm just not going to do anything to mess it up. And I sure as hell don't feel like removing it either. What's the knife? Oh, it's a red, net, red dot knife, stainless steel blade. It's a very good blade. All right, so what did we do? We trimmed it, and I had to pull the glass aid, and then we're just kind of laying it back down. And like I said, if there's any areas that look a little loose um, towards the edges, we hit those with heat. We always heat up the bottom and the top. Yeah, NT blades too, NT stainless steel. Touch up those edges so there's no fingers on the inside. I order all my rolls 60 inch and then ask for them to cut 17 and 43. I've been doing that ever since my first Model 3. Are you able to do... You're able to just cover it with a 43 inch roll? You must get a lot of Model 3s then. So you have tall enough rolls to do most doors and then what, you split the 43s in half for like other windows that you don't have quite enough film for off of a 17? That's interesting. Look, see, we'll even shrink it the exact same way. That's cool. I gotta think about that one way more than I want to. <laughs> you know, everybody is 36, 24, 40s, and 20s. We're simple people. But 43, 17. Yep, after you touch it up, you always gotta um, or after you trim it, you'll always have to touch up the edges. Just think of it this way. You shrunk that whole piece past the edges. And when you trim it to size, you're, sh you're basically cutting in between areas that you shrunk. So, a little bit like a frayed, like if you cut some fabric, it'll be frayed on the ends. And then you like have to stitch it up or something to get it to not be ruffled or whatever, or come unseamed. 
Similar things happening there. All right. The 17 handles more side windows on Toyota Model 3 Jettas. Yeah, a lot of things. So, like, I take a 36, I cut it in half, and that's, what, like, 18, 18? And there's still a little bit of space on most cars and stuff. So, yeah, it makes sense. And you got extra film for Teslas if you have it. The only thing is, imagine it's a little annoying on a 43. Do you have custom boxes too? Cuz they don't they don't do 43 inch boxes. So Just keep the 60 inch boxes. I'm assuming. I'm going to start telling Geo that and they'll be like, "Oh, Gotta get more boxes made. <laughs> Hi, car. Well, it's got the air on right now. So let's turn that off. Let's see, uh, da, da, da. I know this a little bit more now. Steering, so you can do that, and then you can move the steering wheel. Oh, it's already down. In? Ooh, I can push it in. Let's go. Sweet, now I got a little more space up here. I should probably scoot this over a little more, huh? They put the 17 in a 20 box. What do they do about the 43? That's my my question. But that's nice of them. What tape do you use to outline? Uh, the tape was glass aid. If you're learning how to shrink Gonna get in the way a little bit, so just keep that in mind. It's a raised surface. Do you ever get dust? Yes, of course. Everybody gets a little dust and debris. <laughs> Do it with the towel electronics test. <laughs> Look, I was more than happy to do that on my blazer, because I'm pretty confident in GMs being fairly water resistant when you're tinting them. Not many people ever fry a Silverado. But, I don't want to do torture tests on this one. It's really, it really comes down to where do they put modules and where does water trail do. That's all it is. So you can have just as many problems on any type of vehicle. You just got to take that gamble. And on this one, we got plenty of space for both a soak shield. Um, along with the dash towel. So I do both. I saw a thing, a 
think Patrick said a thing. You could like pop this. At least on the Model Ys you could. Oops. Know how true that is on a Model Three, but we're gonna free up. We freed up a little bit of space. Yeah, so it's not pressed tight. So that's cool. What GoPro? Uh, the ten. No. Yeah, hopefully not break the cover. and put two ropes if there's space. Yeah, extra is always healthy. Biggest thing is just, just be conscious of how much you're soaking it down, how much you're cleaning. Um, I'm gonna do something that I've been doing on some headliners recently. And I'm not really going to worry about the sides. Best place to get the ropes. Sun Distributing typically has a bunch in stock. And then this part. This is the part where my film always might bump when I'm trying to sneak it down. Just a couple pieces of tape over here, because this is a fabric-y headliner. I'm not really going to worry about the sides. I have seen a couple instances where people put some pretty aggressive tape on the sides, and then when you go to pull it, it leaves like pulling impressions in the fabric. So you can get them lightly wet. Um, don't worry about it. They should they'll dry. They'll dry okay. If I were to do anything, I'd just put a little piece of carpet shield over it, something with a light tack to it that's going to keep some water off of it, but you should be fine. Want it in a Ford Bronco? Sure. And we found a cheaper option for plotters. There's lots of cheap plotters out there. What's the best place to get the ropes? How many batteries are needed for a four-hour runtime? Um... Just two. So this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. And so after about four hours, um, after about three and a half, it dies. So I don't know where we're at right now, but I think I usually have enough time to do like a full windshield and some doors. But not a back window on top of that. Tape the other side? No, I could, but I don't really need to. Biggest reason is on the, on the other side, my tent is basically unrolled at that point. It's really for when I'm positioning it down here and the tent is kind of up, pushing against the liner. So like, yeah, you could definitely go across the whole thing, go across all the pillars, knock yourself out. Should be fine with just doing the top here. This is a big old windshield. We took a scrubby dub. And see if there's any random things that are stuck to it. No, that's nice. Mikua mod, why? Remember all that spam we used to get?
is gone. It's been gone for like a while now. I don't know if anybody even noticed that it disappeared. I didn't do anything, it just disappeared. <laughs> Scrub Daddy works well for cleaning, but it has to be really wet beforehand. Makes sense. They, what, what annoyed me about the Scrub Daddies is things loosen up in warm water, but so does the Scrub Daddy. So, like, you can switch to cold water, but then you're fighting cold water. But, that being said, we still have them. Their TikTok marketing is really funny, so they win. All right, one more time and then we'll install it. People used to spam a lot. No, we used to have like YouTube spammer bot accounts every like 10 minutes. Uh, Sun Distributing does giveaways. Big ol' windshield. <laughs> yeah, the screens are cool. I was... So, before I got it, I thought I was going to be really annoyed that there was no gauge cluster up front. So you have, like, the speedometer in the top corner of the screen. And I'm like, that's weirdly out of place. Why would you do that? But what's nice is this is more information while you're driving. So what they do is they have like a live traffic monitoring thing. So you can see all the cars passing you or you passing them. And so you're, you're kind of glancing over there pretty regularly. So the speed limit in the top corner really isn't any more out of the way than right in front of you because you're always glancing somewhere. So I give them credit. I really thought I was going to put one of those aftermarket screens in there really quickly. I even figured out like a couple of them that I was looking at. And then I started driving it. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm good. <laughs> there's like very little, there's very little on this car that I was, that I would actually change. I thought I was going to put a shade uh, over the glass, I'm not. I think they just did it for pricing and build simplicity. Because there's so many things about the whole build on this that just screams, like, one, well thought out, and two, cheap. Like, just... So you have seats that bolt in that could be wired up really easily. You have your information thing. So it's like there's just less parts overall, but they're really well thought out. And so you don't find yourself missing anything. So I don't know. It just seems like a really like simplistic design that is seems to be really nice and like your whole battery pack is underneath the car just less things to probably have to wire up and worry about
I thought that was underneath the film. But there we go, let's wipe that down. But yeah, just <laughs> it ain't got no gas in it. Yep. That's gonna be the biggest thing. So it's convenient for commuting because you turn your house into a gas station. But when you have to do farther trips and stuff like that, it's gonna be annoying planning around charging stations. They don't take near as long as what you might think though. But, so I think this isn't ideal yet, and I think they know that. That's why they were always building up their charging infrastructure, and other companies are getting on board. So as that gets better, it'll be more okay. But most people, I think, are, are going to have the opinion, like, I'll have that, and then I'll have a regular gas car or a hybrid, something that I can fill up. So I kind of caught on at a pretty decent time. Inventory ramped up. Prices came down. They've built up quite a few features. Charging, charging infrastructure is better. It still scared me on the way home, though. So I was driving from Cleveland uh, to Sterling Heights. And there was a charger in Toledo, which I was going to go to. But off the freeway, there was like this huge traffic jam. And like there was a semi truck that was like sideways on the road. I'm like, OK, I'm not going to sit in that. So then I, I kept driving, and the next charging station on route was an hour away. So it said I would have 15% battery by the time I got there. And that had me nervous the whole time. I'm like, I don't know. But then I got there, it charged from 15% to 75% inside of 20 minutes. It cost $12 to do that. So now I don't really have to use much power, so I just have the mobile charger at home. So then when I get home, I plug it in. And uh, it might take 12 hours to charge from like 75% if it ever gets down that low. <laughs> but 12 hours is like, okay, I go to bed and I wake up and then it's topped off if I really needed it to. Other than that, I can trickle charge it whenever I want. You pay to recharge also? Yes. Yeah, I didn't really know how all that worked until I went through it. Uh, you go to a charging station. Ugh. So you go to a charging station, you literally unplug the charger, you plug it into your car, and because you already have a payment method on file, it just starts everything. So like, there's very little thinking. It's just, everything is like designed around their app, which is really smart. So I've got like remote start on my Explorer and I was like, yay, that's cool. The app is free, but I only ever go to the app. I only go to the app when I have to remote start it. This thing, you can do a, like other than that, I'll just start it off of the key fob. So this thing is like, you can have a widget on your home screen and then you can like set your cabin temperature and then it'll give you a notification when it's ready if you want to do that. Other than that, you just keep the phone in your pocket, walk up to the car. You don't even have a push button to start it. You just like, it just wakes up you push the stick and you go. <laughs> it feels a little bit like a uh, like a golf cart type of thing. It's just like there's just there were there wasn't a lot of steps involved and now there's even less. It's just different. 
and so it's it's kind of fun. Not a huge deal. I it's definitely not something where like, oh yeah, that's gonna differentiate me buying that over the other one. No, but just when you're living with it, it's like, oh, that's fun. <sighs> Is this the one with the card to enter? Mm-hmm. They got they give you two valet cards and they turned your phone into the key fob. You can still buy a key fob if you want to, but your phone is the key fob, so as soon as you walk up to the car and push the door, it, like, it recognizes your phone every time. But always keep the key card on hand in case you have a problem with your phone. It's just like a backup. But if you want to hand it off to somebody, you just give them the card. So I tinted a friend's car on Saturday, just a couple doors. Um, so I just gave him a card, let him drive it around while I was tinting the, tinting the car, because he was really curious about it. Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> and I will keep bringing this up. This is cheaper than my blazer. So, come at me, bro. Cheaper in what context? Everything. The monthly payment is cheaper than my blazer. The electricity is cheaper. Insurance? Okay, maybe not insurance. <laughs> That's fair. It's probably not cheaper on insurance, but everything else. It's just, it was wild to me. I was like, uh, does, does getting a Tesla make sense? And, like, I had already priced things out for like a month now. I was like, okay, we're getting another Explorer. We already have one. It's gonna be six. <sighs> it's gonna be six fifty a month. We'll get the same one, and then I guess we'll just have two Explorers. I'm like, this is weird. The cost is more than a regular gas car. Um, oh, yeah, because they got their, like, tax incentives and stuff. So that made it cheaper. Yeah, that's kind of weird how that works. They also have better profit margins, from what I hear. Where most people are, like, 8%. Somebody told me that they are 18%. So they actually have more wiggle room to go down. And just, like, be uber competitive. But yeah, would I have got this if this was my only vehicle? No, 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 no. But as a secondary vehicle, is it awesome? Yeah, it's really freaking cool. People ask me like, what's your favorite car? What would you buy? I don't know. I'm, I'm, believe it or not, I'm just not as much of a car guy. I can appreciate like a nice looking car. I can appreciate good cars. For me, it's always like a work tool. What can it do? And most of them just like drive. And like some of them drive faster. And that's cool. But like you have speed limits still. One day I'll miss the smell of exhaust on the roads. <laughs> yeah. I thought... There'll definitely be a nostalgia for stuff like that. Um, it is weird to see, like, this whole transition right now. We're living, we're living through it as it happens. So, like, meanwhile, my, my son is, like, not going to think anything of it, and it's just going to be like, oh, you use those old gas cars? LOL. 
cars used to have internal combustion. Like, that's us right now. We're living through that, like, transition. <laughs> the same way, like, 70s muscle cars were, like, from parents and, like, like, they were teenagers during all of that. And you're like, oh, those are cool. But they're also outdated. Like, we're living through that whole thing right now. It's just from gas over to electric on some scale. But I think there's going to be an enormous amount of, like, power challenges when you get everybody switching over to electric cars. Ooh, power grids are going to fucking suffer real bad. So there's just, as far as convenience and infrastructure, it's going to, it's going to take a long time, but... A mobile, if Tesla ever makes a cargo van, I would change Transit Connect immediately, right? Wow, it was right there the whole time. I can't believe I didn't see it. But yeah, I was really surprised with like the dates that some of the car companies have posted. I don't think it's going to happen like near that quick, but like some of them have said like, "Oh yeah, in 2 years we're like switching this whole line to all electric." <laughs> I'm holding out for what now? personal flying cars or something. <laughs> Might have to wait a while for that one. Dude, I wondered how the glass roof would work as a window tinter. Because I've had them in here, but I've never been able to drive around out in the sun for very long. But this was sitting out in the sun. It wasn't like a hot day, but it was still like you get in the car, you put your hand up there a few inches from the glass, and you can feel the heat radiating off of it. But then it was like cool outside, so when you're driving, all that heat then goes away, and then the glass feels cold, and then you don't feel like it was bright and sunny out, it didn't seem like it was irritating because it was tinted all the way to 2%. So if you're focusing on the road, you don't really think about it. And then at nighttime, it's so dark that it kind of feels like there's not glass right above your head anyways. So, I mean, I, I give them credit. I'm sure in some really hot, some hot days, it's gonna be kind of annoying where, you're, where I might want a shade. But I would do a shade versus tinting it darker. And there's a couple companies that, or there's one company that made a cool like retractable shade that I was looking into, but I wouldn't tint it anymore. It's cool as is. But if anything, you feel the difference between the roof and you feel the difference between like the windshield and the doors. And so that makes you want to put a ceramic on it as well. Because they don't, they don't treat the windshield, they don't treat the doors. It's purely over the top. Unless you maybe buy a higher trim, um, like a Model S, there might be something that they do. I have seen uh, pictures of like iridescent windshields, so I'm pretty sure on the Model 3s that they do, but I don't know, or Model, <sighs> what was it, the Model S? I know I've seen like pictures and stuff of like the back window and like versions that are iridescent, but I, it's from like just a pure cost perspective, it would be the more expensive versions and I couldn't tell you which ones have it, which ones don't without seeing it in person. This one definitely did not. But man, I was really happy 
I was really happy with the sheer amount of stuff this comes with for like being a base model. Because like everybody's like, ooh, you got a Tesla. And it's like, yeah, but it's cheap somehow. Go figure. They're like, really? But they still like, you still get that like, <laughs> I understand people that buy, I think now more than ever, I understand people that buy like 10 year old Maseratis. It's like, oh, it was less expensive and now you're in the Maserati club. <laughs> and so people are like, ooh, you got the Maserati. It's like, yeah, but it was cheap. <laughs> So it's it's just like a it's a fake status thing. It's so funny. Still costs the same to repair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You just hope it doesn't break, which is bad. Um a customer called and asked about some transitional window film like they have for eyeglasses. Okay, so I have firsthand experience. There are a couple out there. I think Coolview is one that makes their own transitional film. I don't know how theirs worked, but the one that I bought off of, like I just bought one off of eBay for some fun in a video. Uh, it's UV. So on a windshield, it did nothing. And on the doors, uh, if they're not laminated, um, it did something, and it darkened up. It was pretty cool. But these are laminated. See that? These are laminated, so if I put that transitional film here, it wouldn't work, but on the back doors, it would work. But it was pretty janky stuff, so. Um, Photo, Photosync is another, is a brand that has their own too that works, um, but it's really expensive. It's like $2,500 a roll, or at least at the time. This was like four years ago, four or five, maybe six, six years ago. I don't know. It was a long time ago, but I'm sure Photosync is still a thing. <gasps> no, there's one little hair here that's going to drive me crazy. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, Rick. Can I use a heat gun to try and remove bubbles from a rear dot matrix, or will I mess it up? Can I use a heat gun to try and remove bubbles from rear dot matrix? Uh, I don't, oh, to like get the dot matrix to look better? Not really, if that's the question. Do you see a market for that? For what now? What were we talking about? Can you explain the Elmer's clue trick? So on big dot matrix, um, like mostly older stuff, what you would have is, oh God. Oh, for, tra sorry, yeah, transitional window film. Um, small, maybe someday, but not anytime soon. Because, like, it's very situational. Here's what I think. I think there's actually... Oh, you're kidding me. I got it off. I bumped it, and it shifted down to there. How did it do that? You bitch.
How's the deposit feature? I just like linked up Stripe the other day and I was trying to look more into it for a little bit, but then I got distracted. There we go. I can heat shrink the back, but not the front. Uh, the front tapers up a little bit, so it can be a little trickier to shrink a windshield, but same rules apply. All right, we got it. So always clean off a windshield really quickly, check it over. If you notice something that's easy to get to, um, you typically can flush that out if you're really careful. Um, but be careful. You know, we kind of went a little heavy and everything should be fine. Do I know that for sure? Whenever I do that, it gets more dirty. Uh, sometimes I fail. The best thing I can tell you is if it's up in here, just peel it back slower so you're not really trying to vacuum any dust into it. Clean off the surfaces around it, so like wipe it beforehand. And just take your time. Like sneak it back, keep your hand, don't brush your hand into the glue. Always keep it up and just try and like squeak, squeak, squeak it out as much as you can. But it's a coin flip, man. Sometimes it just doesn't turn out well. But that one. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna listen to that part really quick. Right now, you have to send an invoice for the deposit or after proposal approval, you can turn it on so they can pay right after. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. So I got I to gotta send a message. Um, there's like one big reason why I like things set up the way that I have them set up. And so I'd be super happy if, if things kind of work this way for it. I can send them so like through a proposal, it still might work that way. But so you go to my, you, you like call, we discuss price, we discuss time. And then I then send them a link to go to my website. And then they fill out their information and leave a deposit that way. And then the bonus of that is it's part of a booking calendar. So then it just gets like automatically on my schedule as soon as they leave a deposit. It just makes my life so easy. So if it were similar to that, I'd be like super excited. So I, sign, I have Stripe. I, I applied to link them together and then I got to follow up with it. But they've got a good calendar, so hopefully you can integrate those. Oh my goodness. That was fun. So we're gonna finish wiping this off, clean it up, uh, do some rear corners. <laughs> and now I'll finally have another demo car for my customers with a windshield. They need that. It's hard to explain 50% without actually showing them 50%. Ooh, that is nice. I'm invoicing deposits on Zettel. Nice.
So what's nice is the way that it's set up right now is customers can go to um, the site, fill out like a TintWiz quote form, and then they get put into the system that way. So if they have some sort of like a booking thing attached to that, that would be cool. Shows the features while driving. I can't actually like do that. I can't go far past my computer. I could do like just turn it on and back it up, but it's not very exciting. I mean, maybe you'll see that car. Right now you can't do it together. Oh, okay. Damn. We'll get there. Because they, what they really need to do is have some sort of like a calendar feature that allows for deposits. And then so you'd essentially like, customer could stay on your site. Um, request a quote or call you or something and then they would you would have like a tint was calendar like a basically calendly type of feature they need to build that into their platform i guess for that part to work but it's nice that if you go through and type up a customer you can send a deposit request right through the app that is a that is a big addition using the try edge to push things. Is your deposit a flat rate or based off the job? Uh, I just always set it to flat rate. Um, it still hasn't changed from what I originally requested. It's just still set at 40 bucks and I've had like very few issues doing the entire thing. Cause like, I don't need to keep your $40. It's just to show a, a commitment that you are actually going to come in. So it's been really straightforward and easy. If you leave a deposit, you have an appointment. If you don't leave a deposit, you don't have an appointment. That's it. If you have to call and reschedule, that's fine. If you call ahead of time and cancel, I'll shoot you your deposit back. Yeah, that's fine. Cause, cause like to me, maybe somebody is gonna start continue to shop around. But it, for the vast majority of people, as soon as somebody leaves a deposit, they stop shopping around because that's where they're going, and that's all I'm concerned about. You called here. You priced here. You scheduled here. But. You know, run your shop however you want. I've seen some people that are non-refundable or they're non-refundable after like the day of the appointment. Uh, so like if you, you know, cause that's the other thing for people. If it's, um, if it comes time to your appointment time and then you're 15 minutes late and you're calling and canceling and wanting your deposit back, oh, you're out money. So unless you wanna be the nice guy So I just had one person um, on Saturday call like 10 minutes before, and he was like, hey, uh, I had an emergency come up. I can't make it. Can I schedule for tomorrow? And I was booked, and I was like, how about Monday? And you know what? Everything was fine. He had brought me other cars. Shit happens. Was I happy about it? No. But... I at least had other stuff that I could do. So I then did other stuff.
You then lose the fee for them to use the card. Yep, 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 yep. That is part of it. So. The more sophisticated something is on one side, the easier it is on the other. So yeah, like unfortunately, you would lose. Oh no, really? That's annoying. Hang on. I guess we've been. I'm I'm running over. Hang on. I just caught in the middle of something. Cannon. I know you can't hear me. Hang on, let me set it back up. We're basically done, but... See, we're taking too long. Which plotter do you recommend for tinting? Uh, I use the Workhorse 1 or 2. Both of them are good. There's a lot of good plotters, but if you're on a budget, those are pretty good options. Then you have uh, GraphTech, you have Jaguar. Just kind of depends on where your budget is. They'll all be good machines. I have a few questions. Ask away. Thank you for the rose. Have you ever had a bad experience with a rude customer? Mm, yes, definitely. I don't remember if I've had one here though, which probably means not really. I've had like some picky people. But they're generally pretty nice, especially when like you come at it from like, I'm gonna take care of your issues as much as I can. Oh, there was one person not too long ago. They were pretty rude over the phone. They like said there was a problem with the windshield, and then they're like, yeah, can we just get a refund so we don't have to come in? And I was like, I can't do that. And they're like, well, why couldn't you do that? I do detailing. Why couldn't you just do a refund over the phone? And I was like, well, because you paid to have the work done. So I can fix it. Oh, shit. Hang on. I forget which one that is. Oh, it, it was, I was right. That. But then they brought it in, and then we looked at the windshield, and then I explained what they were seeing on the windshield. It was the dot matrix area. And I'm like, I, I, I'll be honest, if I redo this, it's gonna look identical. But if you have any other dirt issues, I can definitely take care of those. And, and she's like looking at it and she's like, no. And it, so, if that's, so if that's how it's gonna be, that's how it's gonna be. And I was like, yep, that's how it's gonna be. And she's like, all right. So that was it. All right, this one should be good. Let's see. Is this all good down here? Ooh. See, I get, I, I put this long a little bit. Yep. Nice.
most people are like, they have a concern, they'll voice their concern, and it, it's really like, if it's something with dirt, that's on you, you can take care of it. There's always like some expectation level, but the thing is, once they see it, they don't unsee it. So, you know, hey, I saw this, I don't like it, and, and if you just go, oh, yeah, I wouldn't like that either, and then you like redo it for them, and it kind of explain like, accidents happen, there's usually something, blah, 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 then that's fine. Always try and remedy it as much as you can, but usually have to show some type of, at least with my clients, it's good to show some type of effort that you like, oh, hey, he's not just trying to brush me off. He actually cares about the work. He redid it. That's just, you know, a small spec or whatever. He redid it as best he could. Seems like a good dude. You know what I mean? That goes a long way. But I've seen, I've seen people take the opposite approach, and there'll be something small, and they try and explain it away, and the customer has a little pushback, like, hey, you know, I just, like, I just don't like it. And then it, it becomes like this back and forth, and you're, you're losing at that point. That's why it's best to, like, even if it's something fairly small, show that you actually care, and then you've then made a happy customer, because if you just brush him off, he's definitely not gonna refer anybody back to you, and he's not coming back either. So, you may not want him to come back, so, I don't know. Oh, damn, this looks good. Sometimes I get so wrapped up, I gotta do the rear quarters, I know that. But we got 50, we got 35, I'll be honest, it would look better with 20. I'm going to just say that flat out. It would look a little bit better because 20 looks black. This is black, and everything's kind of got this, like, flush glass look. But this 35, it just looks a little light. But this is for me to explain window tint to my customers. So... That's going to stay that. Yeah, if I, if I was tinting this how I wanted it to look, I would put 20 on the sides and stuff. But I've done so many things with 35 on the front, 20 on the rear um, to show customers. And then it's a good, happy shade for most customers and families and stuff. Like, they at least want to be able to see it and then go, oh, yeah, that's light. I'll go with 20. <laughs> So, on this one, I'm going to do 20 uh, for sure over the back, and then just, I'll tint the whole thing, um, but i got to get the roll for that first. So, there'll be a simple part two to this, and then we got 50 on the windshield, which looks great. <sighs> Congrats on your Model 3. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I got 35 in my mom's car, so it's not too dark for her. Yeah, exactly. I'm a dad. Uh, my wife also drives our vehicles, and it's just one of those like happy mediums. And then every time I pass like a cop, I don't really like worry about it. Where with like 20, that's where I'm like, oh, stands out a little more. But, yeah, I think 20 looks better. It still looks good, though. Um, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the 50. Let's grab a piece of 20, then, and then we'll do these rear quarters. Is that what this is? Do the blackout film from Tint Depot. <laughs> that would stand out so much. 
Or would it? Because the, oh, you know what? Maybe, no. So this portion of the roof is tinted as dark as this portion of the roof. But then they fade it into clear because it's a car. So they're not allowed to uh, tint the whole glass or else I can pretty much assure you that's what they would have done. It's just rules and regulations because this is what they did on the Model Y. It's all factory tinted on the rear, including the hatch. Yeah, 2% would make that portion of the roof look really goofy, I think. So we'll cut up a couple pieces here. Oh yeah, let me make sure. 20? 20, okay. Plotter cuts the quarter as well. Yeah, I would do that really quick. Um, I haven't set it up for this roll yet, so I don't wanna play a guessing game on the last little bit of 20 Apex that I have. I actually ran out of 35 and 50 faster than I ran out of 20 though. So I trust it. I just gotta fine tune settings or guess. I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I run through limo like a madman. Yeah, that's what 20 was like here. For a lot of shops, it was like front doors all day long, 20%. Everybody's doing 20%. If you don't have 20, you're having a bad day. But a lot of my customers, like, they're just... From the channel and stuff, they generally have seen some videos. They do a little research. Um, they're not looking to black out most of their cars. Some people do black them out, but not everybody. I get it a lot like this. How often do you have to change a plotter blade? Plotter blades um, usually last for about a year. Unless they have some sort of like catastrophic mess up and dig into like your cut strip and stuff. All right, so this is gonna be for the other side. And this is gonna be for this side. That's my favorite. You push the thing, see, I don't use the handles like the handles. I push it like a button and then I grab it here. Thank you. That was fun. Burns. Oh, dang. What's up, man? Burns with the 20. Thank you. Looks damn good. Now charge it and repeat. <laughs> Gotta do another one. That guy never answered us on the scraper. Oh, you're right. Why do people do that? People post... Oh, you know, it wasn't even about the scraper. I was going to say, some people like to post things, and then, like, I use this, and then they never say anything about it, and they never respond. Like, I had this film failure. And it's like, what film was it? And then he just, like, disappears. Yeah, that scraper was interesting. I think I could message him, though. But it looked like a... like a three-inch wide scraper or something. I haven't seen those before. It would be fun to know what it was. All right.
Let's squeak this in here. Come on. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Somebody was telling me to use a 4317. Then I got to readjust my film rack. No, it sounds interesting. I still use... I use 36 and 24 more often than not, and then I still use 40s pretty regularly too when I'm using carbon. It's just kind of like the way that it was getting made. Okay, there's a couple, there's a couple little things to consider. Um, Wait, I forgot if you said anything about the 40, like a 43 inch box. So if you're mobile and you're running around, film sizes are gonna be a big concern if you don't have like a lot of space. So like you potentially would just get 60 inch cut and then it would be in a 60 inch box. But 20 and 24 inch boxes are a thing. So like he was saying he had they would add a 17 inch roll in a 20 inch box and they'd put a little spacer in there for them. That's cool. But those things you gotta consider. Um, if you have the space and you can just put film rolls on the shelf, then that doesn't really matter. Oh damn, this dude's got a baby seat here. All right, we're gonna tin against the baby seat because I'm not pulling my baby seat. Mobile is tough, um, but it depends on uh, what situations you're throwing yourself into. If you're running around from house to house, that's one thing. Uh, if you're going from shop to shop, then it's a little bit more controlled. Can I use a clay bar to shrink a rear window? No. Clay bar is not gonna leave residue behind, or it's not gonna leave like, what the dryer sheet does is it leaves like a waxy surface behind. And then that waxy surface helps the film stick to something and so when you shrink it, it kind of grabs to the glass and then you smooth it um, and, and like kind of direct things. That's all it does. So the clay bar doesn't leave that surface behind. Also, like, there's no excuses. Dry sheets are everywhere. <laughs> All right. It's all cleaned. We can do this. We can do this. Ha! I think we did it. I wouldn't be able to do this without the little baby squeegee. It's not grabbing yet. As soon as it starts to grab, then I'm gonna squeegee it out. How big is the back window? 43? 
42. So most people will take like a 60 inch wide roll because that would be the next step up from 40, except for the conversation that we had a little earlier. Um, oh, Shane, Shane's asking. Uh, you know all about that. Um, if I can find my, I don't know where my tape measure is. Do you know where the tape measure is? Was it? Huh? Ah, thank you. All right, let's find out. So like the top is gonna be like the biggest thing. So roughly, yeah, yeah, I think 40, 43 is just like barely big enough. <laughs> Because it's like, yeah, yeah, I guess 42 inch wide, so 43 would just barely cover it. Your garage looks like a video game. <laughs> Streaming was definitely a inspiration for it. Okay, so this has been sitting for a minute, which means it's starting to grab so now I can squeegee it out without it sliding everywhere. And then once you get it tacked, so you can do everything with one hand, really. Nice. Hooray! Look at that. Perfect. What shades? All right, we went with. Uh, 20, 20, 35, and 50. And we'll come back to the back window. That'll be a whole separate stream. I have, if you guys want to see Model 3s, um, just YouTube them. But I have a couple, couple live streams start to finish on the entire thing with the back window. I just didn't feel like doing it today. Especially with like a roll of limo. I, I don't have a 60 inch roll of 20 anywhere. So I didn't want to put limo on it. So I didn't think I was streaming this today and then I did. Kind of figured that out last night. I'm still paranoid I latched the switches, but I didn't, so. Damn. Looks good. Just that little weird part. Much better though. Looks good. All right, where's my phone? <laughs> five twenty thirty five fifty best customers administration. You know, I I I got to take this back a little bit. I I used to give my uh, my dad crap for doing that because he would want us to do like oh, I think fifty. 35, 20, and five. That way it can show all the customers. And like, sure enough, that's basically what I do. <laughs> because he would use his car as a demo car. And to me, just like I was just in the back tinting all day. And it's like, man, why would you do so many shades on a car? Just like all 20, do like 35 or 50 on the windshield and call it a day. <laughs> sure enough. Nope, you get lots of people like, Obviously, it's it's better if you can see it in person. So why wouldn't you? Okay, so everything's all set on this. I can't drive it outside because I don't have the headset range. But all right, so 
Imagine it locked itself. You walk up, it unlocks. It's easy. You get in. You put your foot on the brake, it starts up. You put it in reverse. And then you just start going. So it's cool. So this little bit right here... Let me put on my seatbelt. You're not going to be able to see traffic because there is no traffic. But let me maybe back up to that car. Hang on. Maybe it'll pop up on screen. There it is. Oh, it went away. But it was like you could see a little ghosty. Dang. But... It definitely tells me there's an obstacle there. Um, but in traffic, so you're driving and it's like this. And then it'll show you traffic on both sides. And it'll kind of like zoom out the view. Um, and look, it, <laughs> it thinks that the tin keg's a trash can and stuff. Um, but you'll see a pretty clear image of the traffic. Oh, it thinks the plotter is a... Uh... <laughs> it doesn't know where I am. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Where's the speed? Okay, speed is right here. This little, this little thing. So it's zero, one, two. Put it in drive, one, two. And then if you let go, right now it's set to regenerative braking. So every time you let go of the gas, it'll do a faster slowdown. You can actually change that in your settings. Um, there's a whole lot of things that you can change in your settings. Um, so if you don't like, uh, da, 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 like autopilot, uh, auto steer beta, can I just turn that on? Oh no, it's not enabled for me, so I can't turn that on. Oh wait, hang on, park. Oh, I can turn that on. Auto steer feature is currently in beta. Sure, I'll enable that and I guess I'll be part of the auto steer beta. The ultrasonic sensors are more accurate than Tesla Vision. Uh, yeah, I've seen some videos on that. I don't really trust the cameras as much. Um, but yeah, you have all, all types of settings here. So you can do, like, lights and display and blah, blah. And if you want to get rid of it, you just, like, swipe down. So your navigation is typically here. Your car stuff is typically here. You have some apps, like... You can watch Netflix when you're parked. I'm never going to do that, but that's a thing. Um, dash cam. You can pull up your cameras. Oh, I can pull up dash cam footage. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. Um, I don't know, but they're like... The, the most surprising part was that traffic thing. I should pull it up on my phone, too. I kind of want to bring that up. But yeah, if I just unlock it, it's in parked. Uh, there's no... There's no on or off. It's just you just get out, you close the door, and then when you walk away, it just locks itself. Um, I can, here, let me show you. Here's my car widget right here. So if I click on this, this tells me about my car. Um, I can like pop the trunk. So like a lot of normal car stuff, but it's cool because it's all just, they do so much more through an app. I can start climate control, and those things are all in just quick toggles right there, so that's nice. Um, controls, open the front, open the back, open the charging port, nothing crazy. Um, I don't have anything for like summon or whatnot because I didn't want to pay for that, so it's not going to drive to me. Uh, what kind of warranty? It's a lease, so... It's covered until I turn it back in, unless I damage it. <laughs> then I get to pay to have it fixed. They didn't have any options for any type of damage protection. Um, so some leases will have that like added on in your monthly payment. Some leases will have like tire protections and other things that they, that they could add on. I asked them about that. They don't have anything to add on. So it's strictly all through your insurance. Um, and then you just turn it back in at the end. So this is like, the other thing about it is I, they've been going up and down in value. Um, they just did a bunch of recent price drops. The 
battery long term would probably be a concern. You know, so if I was buying it outright, the idea that, you know, after 100,000 miles, if something goes with the battery, then uh, it's an expensive ass fix. So, I, it's too much of a risk long term, so you might as well lease it. I want to see the RPM. <laughs> The most shocking part about driving is, see, it just locked itself, and then it's got folding mirrors, too. I've never had folding mirrors before. But if I walk up to it, and then I just, like, open the door, then it just unlocks. You just get in, and you drive it. But, yeah, when you're driving it around, um, it's got a lot of, it, it's an electric motor, so it's got a, it's like a drill, you know. So at any point, whenever you're like, you're going slow in a speed and all of a sudden you just crank it onto the drill, you're like going really fast. Same thing with this. It's just like you're going slow or you're going at 50 miles an hour and then at any point you hit the gas and you just fucking go. So it's a much more, like, there's just immediate speed at any point, which is kind of cool. Even for like <laughs> rear wheel base, I was really surprised. It's cool. I've had fun with it. Let me, hang on, let me bring this up really quick. Play the fart, oh, <laughs> hang on. So apparently you can make it fart. Let me see if I could do that. Fart. <laughs> Oh, it is out the front. It's got, I don't know what, so my brother told me that people are changing their horns to fart sounds, but apparently they left it as a feature. <laughs> it actually farts out the front. I thought it might have been the inside speakers. <laughs> what a dumb, funny thing. So you could have somebody like walking past it in a parking lot and then you could you do a obnoxious fart sound. That's hilarious. <laughs> when you were learning to tint, did you only learn on one car or did you learn on multiple? Oh, I, I was working at a shop at an auto accessories company so I had to learn on a lot of different things. I didn't really... Like, I had some in-person training, and then the rest of it was like I was left to my own and just had to figure things out over time. <sighs> Can your car fart? So, yeah, there's just, like, the way that they integrated everything with the app I think is pretty freaking cool. Um, I think it's really smart. From just a business perspective, it's cool. What was the other thing that I was going to do? Um, oh, yeah. I want to bring up... Hang on. Let me see if I can find it really quick. <laughs> Shit out the back. <laughs> yes. Um, up, 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 up. What was I looking for? I was looking for the traffic stuff. Sorry, I got a bunch of family stuff. Uh, Oh, that's these things. Okay, so this is like a good example of your driving on the road. So see, there's cones. And then see, there's cones here. Watch. Semi-truck. Semi-truck. And oh, blind spot. Semi-truck comes barreling past me. So there's just a lot of times like you're driving around in traffic especially with a lot of traffic around you, and it shows all the cars that are right around you all the time. So your speedometer's there, your navigation's there, and then you see, like, the car and what's going on around you. So it's really smart. And then it's got turn signal cameras, but I like this view better. It was just, I, I didn't expect that. It was very, very cool.
Wah. That's a fair point. You don't need to see 5% windshield? Yeah, we'll do like a 5% windshield. We'll do uh, autopilot, and I can take a nap while it drives. Would you consider making your own tint brand? No, uh, but after what high tech's doing, it sure seems interesting. <laughs> Because <laughs> with what they're they're not doing anything overly crazy other than things that I thought a company should already be doing. So like it's cool to see Geo do that kind of stuff, and now High Tech is doing it. And now the conversation is becoming Geo Shield or High Tech. You should do Christmas mode on your Tesla. Uh, oh, I didn't like. Yeah, there's like a light show and some other stuff. You can you can change your car. I saw you could change it into like a Santa Claus, which is kind of funny. But yeah, just the the, the sheer amount of like tech from like, you know, yeah, you can stream video on it while you're parked. Um, they just make a lot of things easy. It's a really cool take on your everyday car where, you know, I the only thing I'm going to do on my Ford, here, I'll even bring it up. Ford Pass, like I'm super stoked. I, I've got remote starter, lock and unlock. That's it. That's like all I'm ever gonna go here for. But there's just like so much more built into the app with Tesla and their charging stations and everything. It's just like, it's kind of shocking. Like you do all your financing and stuff right through there too. It's just a whole different take on it. What about wrapping the Tesla in the tin stuff motif? <laughs> I was looking around for something that might have been like a funky color. The most I saw was like a charger in green and then those were like annoyingly expensive for what they are. So I was like, meh. Geo wanted me to put, they're like, you should put some Geo logos on the side. I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know, I like having my car as my car. I just like a simple, clean look. Uh, if anything, I, I was looking into like the little, maybe like the little spoiler carbon fiber thing that you could put on the back or you could change out the rear thing at the bottom or the front. I don't know since it's a lease if I'd have to change it back afterwards, probably. What percent? So we got 20, 35, and then we got 50 on the windshield. The white and black was a good choice. I think so. And it stands out really, it's really good for videos. And it was the cheapest option. I keep going back to that. It's the cheapest option. Go figure. I don't know why, but I'll take it. Everything else was more expensive. So the, um, let me go back here. Desktop. Um, where is it? Oh yeah, yeah, here. So here's their inventory. Let me move this over to the side here so I can see. Why paint so, like, is cheaper in like, general? This is what I got. I leased it. They have one, two, three now. Uh, they have it in blue, gray, and then when they change colors, that's when the price ekes up a little bit more. Um, the white seats are another thousand, but I like the white, but to show shades, white seats make tint look lighter always. Oh, and they also make the interior strips here light too. That's interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, it looks cool, but it's not as accurate to like show customers in person what 35 and whatever looks like. So that's why I went for black. And then red is the most expensive paint option. I think white, I think the white looks the best. I don't even like these wheels as much. These are more expensive. So base everything, sold. Everything you saw there, that's what this is. Nothing special added to it.
<laughs> You're still alive, Dad. <laughs> Maintenance wise, white and silver are the best. Mm hmm. Yep. White paint is cheaper in general, probably why. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I figured that it would have been like a more sought after color, though. Have like a different color beat, but no. No, white is just the standard. I'll take it. Why didn't you partner with Rick and Helios instead? That's a good question. Um, so at the time, I was working, like, I was getting back into video, and we we're kind of doing some collab stuff a little bit, but not much. Um, they didn't really understand. Like, one, I was inconsistent with video, and I didn't have a great plan. And two, um, it just... I don't really think he understood the potential that was there. So I had done a video with Gio a while back, um, and even they didn't quite understand what I was doing because what I was doing at the time was really like the live streams. And so um, kind of started with that kind of stuff. Uh, we did a couple of videos like beforehand, and so their mindset was like, oh yeah, we need to do more videos. And then I was just doing live streams, and it was just kind of a nice, um, like, over time, they kind of understood what was going on. Um, but Sun Distributing wasn't quite there yet. And then on top of that, they were still making adjustments to their window film line, where it's a lot more stable now. But earlier on, they were making changes to, like, their carbon film. They were making changes to their entry-level film. Um, they were going through some growing pains at the time. But we still work together uh, through like Sun Distributing and stuff. I like them. I like what they do. Thoughts on working at a tin shop? Uh, learning and working at a tin shop, if you find, ow, oh, that's great. If you work at a tin shop that'll teach you, um, that's like a huge bonus. Yeah, working at tin shops is good. There's always more potential on your own, but there's more headaches on your own too. So like some people like to have their own business. Some people like to work for other people um, and shops for like stability and whatnot. So. It's just a couple different angles on it. Pain in the ass to wrap Model 3. That's interesting. I could see why. I don't know anything about wrapping. So I only, I see like strictly window tint. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> All righty. Uh, we're going to shout out some super chats here. Definitely can't wait to sign up for your class here soon. Oh, that's cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, we have uh, a couple more listed, and the May one is filled up. That'll be happening in a few weeks. It's, it's finally coming up. All righty. Big shout outs to the film trainer, uh, Rodney Rodriguez and Burns. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Did you do car wrapping in tint? Uh, oh, painting has to tint a Model 3. Oh, I see. <laughs> Just got done with my live. Dang! What's up, Lucas? Thank you for the rose. That's cool. Live streams are fun, man. You're doing good with yours. I don't know what all the TikTok gifts are. I don't know where they rank. Thank you. I appreciate them. It shows me on the desktop screen that people sent stuff, though. Working on it, trying to grow overall. Yeah, you're doing a hell of a lot for where you're at. I didn't have a shop till like, what, 
three, three years ago now. Like a shop shop. I've been tinning for a long time. I didn't want a shop. Yeah, you're doing good. All the vehicles I've done in the past week have been 70K plus. I'm so happy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you're building quite the business, man. That's super cool. I went to tint my car now with 3M Crystalline because of the law in the Netherlands. What's the law in the Netherlands? The beginning of your business is always a grind, but if you stick with it, it typically only gets better if it's set up right. What kind of question is that? Would you rather the heat gun your buddy can you repeat that? What about the heat gun? Heat gun or a Wagner? Trying to convince my princess to go to your school, but she doesn't like Detroit. <laughs> I'm not like in Detroit in Detroit. We're in like a industrial, little bit of an industrial area right next to residential. And like, there's nice things around here, but it's a it's, it's I wouldn't say like it's it's busy suburb life around here. So there's nothing like super unique right around here. Um, so it wouldn't be like exciting, but it's not dangerous. <laughs> she thinks you're in a bad part. If I was in a bad part, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> There's bumper stickers that go around that, that are like Detroit-ish, and it's like Metro Detroit is like a big area. I can't go darker than factory tint and crystalline is almost clear. Oh, yeah, there's quite a few like that. Yeah, 70 or 90%. Mm-hmm. Crystalline would be very expensive, but yeah, right up there with all those. The heat gun your friend had the other day that was expensive, if that one was 50 bucks, would you buy that one over the Wagner? Well, yeah, it's like significantly beefier. And I bought two. You mean like this one? The 20... 2320? 20, yeah, 2320E. This one's like 300 bucks. It's really good. If it was $50. <laughs> Look, the, the reason why the Wagners, I like showing those more often than not, is because it is the best cheap heat gun out there. So money's not an issue with that heat gun. Other than that, there's very few heat guns in between that and spending a lot of money on a heat gun. Um, they, there's, like, there's good heat guns that are a little bit more expensive, still under $100, but I wouldn't say they're any significantly better than that Wagner right there. That, that Wagner will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of them. Because those heat guns have extra features, and you just don't need extra features. You just need a heat gun to get very hot and blow some air. That's it. You ever subcontract flat glass through other shops? Been thinking about it recently as I can't, can't do flat glass myself. Um, I don't hardly ever get any questions about it, but it would be smart to. They're, like, the other side of my business is everything with like the store um, and video. So like all this extra stuff takes up a lot of my time and thinking. So I don't have just much time to think about expanding anywhere else. I'm just really focused on growing the handful of things that I'm doing. And yeah, 
it's been all going really well. What brand do you supply 90% ceramic? Mm, I don't know, but a handful of companies have 90% ceramic. It's not, I just can't name any off the top of my head. Like 70 looks virtually clear, but I know there are 90% out there. It was more like, I think, like a Lumar Air 80 or an Air 90, something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't do flat glass either, um, but it would be smart to contract it. You just got to find a, you know, go out of your way, find a shop, find somebody that you can rely on or whatever. I know there were, um, like, I've talked to some companies, one of them I used to work for, they used to find flat glass tinters and have that side of the business too, and they would go bid the jobs and they would hand the work over to a flat glass guy who didn't work exclusively for them, but then just like most tinters, like he's good for a while and then he goes missing somewhere and then they have to go find somebody else. So yeah, finding another company, doing the bidding, taking a percentage off the top, you could definitely do that. I have a Steinel car wrap edition. It comes with a 21 foot cord. I did not know they did that. That's super cool. That'd be helpful. I was just wondering because I like the Wagner. I just got it. Same as yours. And my more expensive one I find is almost as hot. More ease with the Wagner. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's like, they can only pull so many watts out of the wall. Um, and they have to get like significantly more expensive and well made. And then they really start pushing those breakers. So like this one, there's one right underneath this that I bought for like 170, but it's really similar, just better quality to the Wagner. And then there's this one, which is a good step up. Takes a little longer to heat up to its full temperature though, where the Wagner is just like, it's 30 bucks. You don't care about beating it up. It works plenty well. You can uh, shrink a back window within like two minutes with it. So I never find having to spend any more money on anything else, especially cause like heat guns are somewhat disposable. All righty. Well, I'm going to take off here. We'll be back sometime soon with this back window, but we have other cars to stream and stuff like that. Um, but thanks for hanging out today. It was nice to see you all. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Bye.